Central Food on Bar 7 Stillman for Victoria Bryan at Sheehan and Darren Goldson. Emergency umpires in South Australia and Moriarty. The Gandhi umpires from South Australia, Ian Denham and Randall Shepard. And the Gold umpires, Mike McGuire and Peter Simons. Welcome back to a packed football park here in South Australia and let us just get uh, one thing quite correct. I mentioned that the Crows defeated the champions, the night champions of course, Hawthorne in their opening round. We mustn't upset uh, the Collingwood Army but uh, the Crows here in full force once again and joining me in the commentary position today for the first time here at football park this season, Dennis Cometti and Bernie Quinlan. Gentlemen, welcome. Yes, thanks, thanks Andy. Well, the umpires are out there. The rain has stopped. That's a good sign. It will be a bit greasy out there today. More from Max a little bit later. Let's check the two sides, beginning with the Crows' defence. Nigel Smart at full back. Top job on Jason Dunstall last Friday. He's a good player. The halfback line Warhurst will have the job on Steve Kernahan, and he did an excellent job last week against uh, Hawthorne. So, uh, well, I think he's a man for the job for Kernahan, and will handle that OK. David Marshall, Andrew Jarman and Simon Tregenza, Adelaide's best line, quite outstanding against the Hawks on Friday night. Yeah, Smith's been named at centre half forward. I wouldn't be surprised, surprised if Klug started there. Silvani Carlton's best and fairest last season, so Klug will have a tough job there. David Kernahan at full back, a former South Australian. He'll be very keen to do well this afternoon. And in the, in the rucking division, Negri was the uh, player who started it all last week for the uh, Crows. Up against Madden, he won't have it so easy this week because Madden's extra height will worry him. McDermott also, and McGuinness, so they have an excellent on-board lineup. The interchange players, not too much experience on either bench. So we're set to go this afternoon. Adelaide, the Crows looking to go 2 and 0. Oh. Carlton, of course, trying to be the first side to defeat them at home. We'll be back with all of the action right after this.
The call inside that number three, Richard Dennis. 21, Craig Bradley. And 39, Peter White. The interchange players for the Blues are 36, Tim Remitz. And 40, Andrew Cavanaugh. Cotton, coached by David Parkin, of course, captained by Stephen Cavanaugh. <laughs> The Adelaide Crows for the line to number 9, Bruce Linder, 23, Peter McIntyre, 25, Mark Nickham, 35, Rodney Jemison, and into the Crows lineup today, number 22, Michael Murphy. The interchange players for the Adelaide Crows are 8, Eddie Hockey, and 14, Alan Bartlett. Adelaide coached by Graham Ford, captain by Chris McDermott, the vice captain of the Adelaide Crows, Tony McGinnis. Both sides out on the ground here at Football Park. The rain has ceased, but for more on the weather conditions with his Mitsubishi Motors report, here's Max Stevens. Thanks very much, Sandy. Well, 15 minutes ago, as you said, it was pretty foul down here, but now things are looking quite good as the sun comes across from the east. The current temperature is 21.3, and our expected maximum, we're quite near that now, 22. The humidity, 48%. The wind, 10 to 15 k's right across the ground. No goal advantage. The ground condition, well, because of the rain, it's a little slippery. The forecast, cloudy periods with a shower or two. Thank you, Max. And Max will be keeping us up to date on the boundary line throughout the match with all that is happening. And Bernie, if we have a look at this Adelaide Crows lineup and bearing in mind their performance last week, would you agree the worrying line is across the centre, Marshall? Jarman and Tregenza, they picked up what just on 100 touches last week. Yes, well nearly that's handy, uh, 90 in fact, but uh, they were very good and drove the ball into the forward line on numerous occasions. It is a very good line for Adelaide, Adelaide a very experienced line. And look at Marshall who's played over 300 games with Glenelg, Tregenza who adds a lot of pace and of course the experience of Jarman, so I think that line will really worry Carlton. Can we expect to see a new look Carlton again? under the guidance of David Park and Dennis who had success in successive years 81 82 then still remained in the 5 in 83 84 85 I think it has to be that way Sandy they've got to turn it around because their fortunes have slumped in recent seasons I think they've turned over some players you look at the experience in their side today they're down on experience so it's really a very tough contract as far as the Blues are concerned this afternoon to win at Football Park after what we saw a Friday week ago under lights against Hawthorne this Adelaide combination most impressive and you get those young players coming into the this cauldron this afternoon what 40,000 fans here supporting the Adelaide Crows so it will be a baptism of fire very quickly John Dorotich by all accounts is a much improved player this year under David Parkin Justin Madden is fit and rearing to go so to Silvani and here is Graham Corns I don't sing happy birthday I don't think we will yet <laughs> he's probably not too concerned about his birthday at the moment of course, a man with uh, a great record here in South Australia. Had a stint, and only a short stint, across the border. But uh, his success rate as a player and a coach here is very high indeed. Bring uh, number seven for Carlton. Taking Wayne Johnston's number is Brett Ratton. Of course, Johnston now playing with Sturt here in South Australia. And one of South Australia's favourite sons right there on screen. What a player he's been. Not that one, although he is too. It's Chris McDermott coming across to toss the coin, but I spoke initially of Stephen Kernahan, a star with Carlton, a star in South Australia, robbed of a McGarry medal, of course. He won one, but didn't win one, if that makes sense. He was robbed out during the course of the season. He did a Derek kicker. So here's the toss, and it looks as though the Crows may have won it, and they're kicking to the right. Speaking of favourite sons here in South Australia, when we came into the ground this morning, we were accompanied by uh, Jeff Motley and his son Peter. He's looking very well indeed, which is uh, grand news. And uh, I guess his loyalties will be somewhat divided today. I think the, uh, the Crows really will be worried by Silvani. Sandy and uh, Coonahan, the two key positions, centre-half forward, centre-half back. Silvani is a great player for Carlton across that half-back line. And, of course, uh, Steve Coonahan at centre-half forward. 
He's an amazing player. Do you think Carlton can win? Well, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going for the Crows, mainly because of the crowd factor over here. The support, a tremendous support over here for the uh, Adelaide Crows. Magnificent feeling when you walk in the ground. It's a, a really big build-up. And I think they will be G'd up by the support that is shown by the Adelaide people. Just like a finals atmosphere, really, isn't it? Every mm. game over here, yes. Mm. But, of course, they start their uh, on-road haul next week. They've got three tough away games, finishing with the West Coast Eagles in Perth. So things are not going to be easy. That'll be an interesting test when we go to Sydney and follow their fortunes against the Sydney Swans. Suddenly a small crowd, those that are there are hostile. Small ground. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how they adapt. Well, the Scott missile's gone straight to the bench for the Crows, Eddie Hocking. Crowd in full voice. It'll be Negri up against Madden to open proceedings. Carlton kicking to the left of screen. Maynard's on Doritich, giving away some height down there. Looks like uh, Carlton virtually, uh, or actually the Crows virtually with two centre half forwards. Umpire Sheehan and Goldspeak in charge here at Football Park. Jarman and Silvani niggling in the middle. Negri over the top of Matt. Down goes a Crow. Clue tries to get the hand pass away. Capitan was in there, couldn't get it out cleanly, comes out wide towards the wing. The hurry kick by Adrian Bassett goes towards the boundary line and over. Well that's interesting Sandy, looks like Cavanagh's on the ground playing on Smith. Or maybe he's on Klug and it looks like Silvani's on the ball. Throw in again. Have to come back, Andrew Phillips wanted to scoot away. So, Cavanagh to take it at half back. Towards Dorotich he goes. Strength of Dorotich. Not going to be paid the mark. Good support, however, from O'Sullivan. Luke O'Sullivan's kick is a good one to have. He's off. Mill is off. He's caught. Loses it. Pass Filky. Filky gets another chance. Jarman gets a kick out wide. First to it could be Stephen Edgar. Back in the middle again. Edgar pumps Carlton up to the forward line and Gleeson. Marks on the half forward flank. Wants to go on with the job. Stab passes in towards Kernahan who takes a diving mark just inside 50. Got Dorotich calling for it at the back. Elects to go short. He wants Silvani. And he finds him. There's the first and second in Carlton's best and fairest last season. Silvani the winner and Kernahan runner up. Combining very well on the forward line. Changed many games last season when he went to the forward line, Steve Silvani. And he's right in front of the Carlton cheer squad. Silvani, first shot at goal. You've only got to listen to the crowd to know that he was well off target. Doritich eventually sees it over the line for one behind. So first score on the board going to the Blues. Nigel Smart there, number seven. Warhurst to kick it in. Goes in short, Maynard. It has got in. Force the error. Herman's got it. Goes to Kernahan. Goal coming up. Terrible mistake there. 1-1 one, one to no score. Yes, Maynard looking very slow when he received that pass. Tried to play on. Something he must realise in this standard of competition. You cannot be slow. There's one chance and one chance only. And Maynard badly caught there in the hand pass. Finishing up with uh, Steve Kernahan who kicked a very simple goal for Carlton. Carlton lead by seven points. We're back in the middle. Negri wins it down. Taken by Ratten. Through the centre towards half forward goes the kick. Foot race towards the outer side. Doritich flicked it back to his own advantage. Ooh. Confronted by Lee. O'Sullivan towards the boundary. Can't keep it in. We'll have a throw in. White Wayne starting to fall again surface would be slippery the rain stopped initially about 20 minutes before the start of play Negri works his way in front wins it down Alvin got into trouble this is McGuinness around the outer side long kick Klug is the target fisted away down there knocked on by Hart towards centre half forward Justin Madden left the ball behind so did Klug was Klug held not according to the umpire Madden knocks it out wide Gleason taken high by McGuinness Runs away from half-back, kicks towards centre wing, O'Sullivan and Thompson 
Uh, Sullivan keeps it in, initially at least. Still he goes, outnumbered. Charged down the hand pass by Filkey. It bounces out of bounds and will be thrown in. Well, we'll see most of the play over on that wing today too, Dennis. The wind's uh, dragging it right over into that side of the ground, so we won't be much, uh, there won't be much play in front of the main grandstand. Negri and Madden once more. Jarman at the back. Bit of pushing and shoving going on, going the way of Madden. The advantage is paid. Phillips pumps Carlton up towards half forward once again. Dorotich is there. Can't quite get front spot. Shovel clear towards Hannah. Can he pick up the slippery ball? No, he can't. Back to Phillips. This time on the right foot towards Kernahan again. Traps it beautifully. Kicks over his body. Howell it bounce. In towards the square and rushed over for one behind. That's also Kernahan's lined up at full, for, full forward with uh, Warhurst picking him up. And Dorotich playing at centre half forward. Carlton leads by eight points. Warhurst brings it back towards Negri. Madden over the back to affect the spoil. Silvani gets it away to Alban. Hurried kick up towards the half forward line once again. And Carlton have started very well. Herman is going to have a shot from just inside 50. This for Carlton's second goal. Ian Herman. A drop punt. Sits in the breeze. Props a little. Cut it. A few words being said amongst the Crow players. Well, much too easy, wasn't it, Sandy? Yeah. The two... No fist. No, two tall Crows players there, Warhurst and Negri, virtually watching Steve Coonan take the mark. Each relying on the other to do the job. They're <laughs> virtually fighting each other. <laughs> nice to be home. Slip around the front. So Coonan for his second. And this to make the Blues lead 14 points. From 20 metres out. He makes no mistake. The second goal to Carlton and Steve Kernahan. And I think he's pretty pleased to be back here in South Australia. And doing it very well too. A good move by David Park and to put him at full forward. Let's have a look at that mark again in replay. And two big players, Negri and Warhurst, getting in each other's way. And making it very simple for Steve, Steve Kernahan to slip around the front. Take that mark virtually unopposed. So a good start by Carlton. Carlton lead by 14 points now. There's the time remaining. Strong cross breeze. But if anything, it's favouring the Adelaide Crows kicking to the right. Bounce back in the middle. Negri and Madden this time. Phillips kept it in front. Gleeson. Silvani breaking away from the centre square. Out wide to accommodate the run of Hannah. Smart in close attendance. Smart knocks it away intelligently. Hannah kept it in apparently. It looked out. Off the ground by Hannah. Good centering soccer. Dorotich spills to Lee. Away to Filkey. In the opposite pocket. Grantley Filkey. It's slippery. Gleason closing. Great desperation there by Gleason. McGuinness grabbed Alvin. This is Edgar. He's playing. Down he went. McGuinness emerges with the ball inside his own defensive 50. Hoisted wide but out of bounds on the full. Halton to take the kick on the outer side. Caverton goes in short. Half volley for Watton. Caverton again. Outer side. Kicks towards the attacking 50. Madden Look. dropped the mark. Should have held it. Negri comes away. Thrown by O'Sullivan. Is he paying the mark? Uh, I think he's been paid the free kick there. Dennis he was interfered with. But very lucky Madden. Dropped a very simple mark. It used to be a great mark. But he cannot take them over his head these days. Long and low towards Hannah. At the back. Kernahan gives it away again to Herman who lost it Maynard defending but he pushes it back Herman can get another one here towards the boundary line and Alban Filkey sets upon him and asks the question McGuinness plays on and comes away once more both inspired game last week and he started well once again to on the end of the hand pass now the Crows a chance up towards Smith over the centre thought about someone going past what's he got up forward Watts Hodges goes short towards Marshall who had a sensational opening last week. But it's going to be the Blues out of trouble once again. Verbeek receiving from Bassett. Gives it away to Phillips. Up towards half forward. Negri to the spoil. Waiting down McDermott. They combine well. Filkey again. Stabbing over the centre and Clue takes the mark. That's got to be 50. Surely Sandy. Drag to the ground. No 50 metre penalty. Play on is called in fact. Clue. He wants Hodges. He's got it. Yeah, Scott 
strong mark there by Hodges. A good chest mark, a great lead. And after he took that mark, he certainly didn't stop. He steamrolled the Carlton player there who got in his way. And that was Edgar. So Scott Hodges looking for his first goal in the 91 AFL season. He's got it. Well, we saw his kicking let him down earlier on in the year, Bernie, but spot on that time. He kicked very poorly, in fact, in the uh, pre-season competition games. Uh, a couple of occasions he kicked two goals, well, one game he kicked two goals, seven. As we have a look at this mark in replay, a very good read. He's obviously uh, got plenty of ability. If any player can kick 153 goals in a season, he uh, obviously can kick better than he did in that pre-season comp. 2-2 to a single goal. Just under 17 minutes remaining till quarter time. We're back in the middle. Negri and Madden. One down by the former. McDermott. High kick towards half forward. Kluge camped underneath it. Falls to Edgar. Well played. Held without it. No free kick. Gleason to Phillips. Across it comes to Cabadon. Run down from behind. Scrambles a kick. Still inside the centre square. Madden lays it off. Latin across, O'Sullivan now inside the 50, O'Sullivan's kick looks good, it's hit the post halfway up. Good passage of play by the Blues. Luke O'Sullivan. Here's Lindsay. In short, obviously policy, this is Maynard. Lays it off, Warhurst, shrugs a tackle, lunging hand pass, Pregenza on his own defensive 50. Jarman's the target, surrounded, wanted to go, got the hand pass away. Pilkey on centre wing, sweeping hand pass over the top, Smith knocks it on. Dean comes up to meet it, pushed in the back, no free kick. Here's Smith to Marshall, running away from his own goal. David Marshall in trouble now. Edgar goes in with courage, knocks it towards the boundary line, it's out of bounds and will be thrown in. Well, Carlton look as if they will improve on last year's performance. Uh, David Parkin has a good record in his first year at a club actually winning the flag in his first season at Carlton. Nine points the margin, McDermott claimed, loses it to Ratton. The centre wing, Dorotic running with the fly of the ball, but he's not good enough, a fine mark taken by Lee. Quickly away to Maynard, the Crows got towards the half forward line once again, Madden thought about backing into the pack, weighted down, clue towards full forward, hits the Hodges. I think Hodges thought about diving for the mark, elected to leave it, then yet may dribble through just hitting the base one goal one Adelaide Carlton at 2-3 looks as though we're going to have this rain on and off throughout the afternoon David Kernahan electing to go down the middle he wants Madden or Cavadon Cavadon was uh, the one in front couldn't complete the mark Edgar can't take it Jarman like lightning to McGuinness he snaps it towards goal there's another one It's a little bit slow to start off Adelaide, but now uh, finding their feet. And these conditions uh, will make it very difficult for both sides. And a very good running side, the Crows, as they have shown last week. And they back up beautifully, and there McGuinness on the end of that hand pass from Jarman. A quick snapshot at goal, and finding the target. Steady rain falling at Football Park. The margin is two points. We're back in the middle. Madden. Thompson grabs it, hurried kick, Filkey's got the run of it, he's been busy so far, pushed in the back, no free kick, Phillips burrows in, and uh, Sullivan was taken high, must get the ball. Interesting watching that last goal kick by Tony McGuinness, they posted the outriders for the kick in, then wide on the flanks, did Adelaide, and Carlton went to the outside, led back towards the middle, McGuinness stayed off the pack, got the goal, there's a free kick downfield, this is smart. Smart towards centre wing, going back is Herman, missed it. That ball is greasy. Kluge pushed off it. Bassett the hand pass away to Herman. Charged down superbly by Tregenza. And it's forced out of down. Simon Tregenza, only 20 years of age, already runner-up in two McGarry medals. And had a fantastic first half last week against the Hawks. Madden, Jarman, could have almost been taken high and take the umpire said yes. He was, with the, was one of the architects last week. Quickly off to Bruce Lindsay. Lindsay out wide in front of Smith. With him, Verbeek. Alvin and McGuinness now. 
Oh, McGuinness is quick. Look at that, beautifully done. Over the top, this could be a chance for Klug again, but he's taken out of it. Alvin heads towards the boundary line. Klug late, and finally over the line once more for another throw. -in. The Crows steadying after an early onslaught by Carlton, and in particular Steve Kernahan, who's kicked their opening two goals. Kernahan's come out to centre-half forward now too, Sandy. Off hands from that boundary throw-in. Alvin goes towards the outer side. Madden scores a chest mark this time, so he's one and one. It must be very slippery. Well, not that slippery, sure, <laughs> that you drop those chest marks. I know the conditions are difficult, but uh, Justin Madden was a great mark at one stage in his career, but uh, rarely takes them these days. Here's the boundary throw-in. Madden, wide of the pack, taken by Filke. Centre wing kick. Opportunity here for the Crows. McDermott. In fact, it's Murphy. Had it knocked away by Dean. Still Dean goes. It's left the ball behind. Murphy tries to go off the ground. Lunges back after it. Socket away by Bassett. And it's out of bounds and will be thrown in. Carlton 2-3. Adelaide 2-1. I think the hard luck story, Dennis, for the Crows was McIntyre, who had a wonderful debut last week, but he injured himself uh, driving muscle very early on in the game, played the entire game with it, and finished up kicking four goals. But he's out today. Which muscle was that, Sandy? The, the driver. driver. The driver. Where's that? Well, you know the driver as well as I do, Ernie. The burning. <laughs> On the golf bag. Latin had it go through his legs. It's going to be a Carlton free kick to be taken by Madden, which is where the driver is. Madden. Over centre wing. Goes yeah, straight to his opposing ruckman, Romano Negri. And the Crows preparing a change. The missile's about to come on. Eddie Hockman, Jarman in the centre. Across the field, you're going to have to go back. Well, what, Sam? You took the mark and then played on. There's no time on call, so surely you can take a mark and then play on. Jarman from the defensive side of Sim to a congested half forward region, but he spotted Smith who led well and was able to sneak away. He shrugs the tackle, he's still outside 50. Kicks up towards full forward. Hodges is there, Klug is there, Murphy and at the back. Can't take it. Herman is playing to just about lose it. Marshall can go over the top to Tregenza but was well tackled. Loses it again. Murphy. Now Hart. Too wide, out of bounds on the full. One of a number of former club captains. Hart in the South Australian lineup. Kernahan's kick, David Kernahan. Negri, got a hand to it, but couldn't take it. Murphy through, also without it. Alvin, a hurried kick towards centre wing, but Filky will be there. Good shepherding by Warhurst, sees him clear now. It's going to be down the ground. Kernahan apparently came in late. Very late on that one, Sandy, actually. And the Adelaide player's not too happy with Steve Kernahan. And the crowd certainly will get stuck into him after that. Doing <laughs> it right in front of the members, where his father is sitting. Well, he picked the right bloke. Brantley Felky's been playing very well so far, and obviously Kernahan realised that. Regenza takes the short pass. Murphy off the ground for Eddie Hotton. Simon Tregenza. Probably within scoring range with this breeze at his back. Kicks from about 45, slides it right across the face. There's a big pack of players at the fall of the ball. Knocked away by Madden, taken by Hart. Silvani right on him. Hodges has got it. Kicks it straight up in the air. Negri camped underneath it. It drifted away from him. Opportunity now for the Adelaide Crows. Negri burrowing in. Ratten does brilliantly. Got it to Edgar. Dragged off it. Marshall. Quick hand pass away to Hart. Hart 40 metres out, standing start towards full forward, Dean, cleverly, back to Bassett, but came up a bit of Tregenza, not by design, and it will be a Carlton free kick in the back pocket. Carlton at 2-3, Adelaide two goals one, Adrian Bassett will bring the ball back into play. Out of the back pocket he comes, towards Madden. In front of him was Ratton, couldn't complete the mark. Edgar off the ground towards the centre half back. Melbourne showed courage but lost the football. Hocking through. But there's a free kick being picked up and it's going to go the way of the Crows. And it will be taken by Robert Thompson. Thompson at half forward. 
long kick in towards the square Hodges doing some muscling work with Kernahan neither can take it and the throw in, in the left forward pocket just two points in it Madden and Clue Madden gets rid of his opponent Silvani wants a passage to get out of trouble but it's not going to go too far Filky couldn't quite hold the slippery ball but he recovered beautifully shows some pace Lindsay's alone at half forward Bruce Lindsay pops it long fine kick in towards full forward but off target from one behind trying to work out what the crowd are doing whenever Bruce Lindsay gets the ball whether it's Bruce 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 or not paying him the dividend perhaps he deserves Hart having a few words to say nothing in that so plenty of tension here at football park not a good kick chance for Klug if he can control it gets away from Bassett gives it to Tregenza from a standing start he pumps it towards Hodges couldn't take it McDermott at the back perhaps should have socked it off the ground with a slippery ball and Carlton will clear towards Herman who takes it over the line drops it and we'll see a throw in but the Crows still have it in their attacking zone on their 50 metre line so we started with a rash of goals and now it's a real battle out there in these conditions just over seven and a half minutes remaining till quarter time. Madden decisively down to Herman. Rennitz, hurried kick, wide. Thompson back across his body, down towards the attacking 50. Fine Mark McDermott, who wanted to go. Has been playing three for in the back. And I think that must have been touched off the boot, Dennis, because uh, McDermott was very keen to play on. Yes, didn't hesitate. And didn't hesitate, and then uh, there's a free kick too high in the back, and that 50 metre penalty. against Ian Herman so McDermott goes to within 10 metres of goal yes well they're very costly aren't they we saw a couple last night against the uh, Brisbane Bears very costly they both resulted in goals and now uh, this could be very costly for Carlton Chris McDermott centre of controversy surrounding his first appearance in AFL football against Hawthorne and he comes and gets the goal the Crows take the lead they lead by five points well it is unforgivable that sort of thing because uh, McDermott had the free kick he would have been 60 meters out from goal with no chance of uh, scoring kicking into a very crowded forward line so it's just a lack of discipline by the Carlton players and they really need to cut that out of their game if they are to be successful. Misty rain persisting over football park. Madden wins it out of the centre. But three quick goals to the Crows. See them hit the front. Here's Bruce Lindsay. Plays on towards Smart. Gets a hurried kick under pressure. It's high towards centre wing. Three Carlton players there. Phillips just keeps it in play. He's going straight back to Lindsay couldn't hold it bounces off John Doritich smart comes through with a hand pass towards Jarman who tried a deft little flick down couldn't take it Lee had an airy then almost gave away the free kick on Alvin Herman misses it Lindsay McGuinness in trouble Thompson quick hand pass away Marshall will pay the advantage there the tackle was too high towards Klug he's upset Tregenza claimed beautifully by Bassett Dean goes in strongly with Hocking not pretty but it's pretty tough out there at the moment and eventually Herman under pressure sees it over the line he's a real crowd favourite little Eddie Hocking he really threw himself in in that contest with uh, Herman looks like Georgie Bissett doesn't he very similar build still on centre wing Madden trying to pluck it out of the air has it stolen by Marshall Peter Dean courage back and back couldn't control it recovers well tackle too high and he's going to take a free kick Just on the defensive side of centre wing, Carlton trailing by five points. And tidy kick by Dean. So Meldrum into trouble. Still he skirts the ball out towards the outer side wing. About four soccers from Meldrum. Has he taken high? Has he held without it? Not according to the umpire on either count. And Smith shepherds the ball across the line. 3 2 to 2 3. Towards the end of the first term. Still the rain continues to fall. Negri and Madden 
Backhanded down by Madden. Hard off the ground. Hard against the boundary line. Scrambles a kick forward. It floats down towards Hocking. Good use of the body. Verbeek knocks it towards the boundary line. And we'll have a throw in out there. Hocking. Marvellous story that one. One of the smallest players in the AFL. Paul Meldrum towering above him. Madden again, decisively, down to Gleeson. Still Gleeson. Kicks from half back towards centre wing. Lindsay works his way to the front. Slapped on by Thompson. Hart claimed there by Rennitz. And we'll have a ball up. Midway between centre wing and left half forward. What are you feeling in this game? It's hostile out there at the moment. Raleigh's still up as you saw. Madden, who's dominating those big man Jules, got it down to Cook. He comes away with it. He's been very busy. Valley an attempt to mark by Alban. Dean, who's been resolute in defence. Off the ground by Tregenza. Open goal square. Eventually Bassett gets back. Hard against the behind post to Alban. Nothing down the grandstand wing for him, so he kicks out wide. Rennett comes up to meet the ball. Now he's in trouble. The players have got the numbers. Alvin gets the kick away. Lindsay, the awkward half volley across half four. McDermott to Berkey. He's been everywhere. Silvani, great tackle. Brought him down. Herman. Gleason. Phillips now. The run from Edgar. He storms through centre half back and kicks up towards Hannah. Can't take it cleanly on the chest. Recovers. Gives it to Madden. The big man lays it away once again to Edgar. Stabs to Kernan. Steve Kernahan's booted two, unselfishly goes short, they can go over the top, Dorotich is in the square on his own and there's another one. So John Dorotich gets his first and Carlton again wrestles back the lead, 3-3, plays 3-2 on the seven sports scoreboard. Which was set up by a magnificent tackle in the back line by Stephen Silvani. He came from nowhere to tackle Grant Filkey. And uh, Filky looks like he was struggling to have a shot at goal himself, and all of a sudden, that magnificent tackle turned it into a Carlton goal. Under three minutes remaining in this first term here at Football Park. Good tight first quarter. Carlton skipping away, the Crows coming back. Negri and Madden again to do battle in the middle. One by Madden, Bassett got a boot to it, down towards the half forward line and Herman goes over the top, was looking for Phillips. Sockered clear and eventually over the line on the Crows half back flank by Scott Lee. On a greasy day it's often better to kick. Dorotich coming to do the work against Negri. Some holding on, going the way of the South Australia. Not too keen on kicking, he likes to get the handball away, does so to Lee. Goes over the centre, but Madden is there, and this time, he holds it. Madden, forward of half back. Just over two minutes remaining till quarter time. Kicks towards centre half forward, and Dorotich, strong Mark Maynard. He can really take a grab. Romney Maynard, best and fairest at Norwood in 89, and now 50 metres. There's frustration by Dorotich. Maynard would not be as tall as Dorotich and uh, a great fly he times the ball perfectly with that leap 60 metres out from goal floats one down towards full forward Hodges outnumbered down there Hart roving the pack brilliantly smothered off the boot by Silvani Kernahan tries to go off the ground and there's going to be a free kick it's coming back to Rennitz Carlton showing plenty of desperation this is Phillips in the back pocket he can run it out now nothing down the ground for him it requires Herman to come on a lead. Lee knocks it away. It's taken by Lindsay. Charged down by Ratton. Jarman too slow. Herman on his knees. The beak in trouble. Strong tackle for Denza. In goes Jarman again on Herman. Ratton's got it. Great tackle Jarman. Pass it. Gets it across to Gleeson. Gleeson from centre wing towards half forward. Awkward one for Maynard. He played it well to Marshall. Filkey's on towards the outer side. It skids in front of him. Now it sits. Filkey. Forward at centre wing, goes down towards the pocket and Klug, closing Silvani, timely first. Klug to no one, well somebody, but not one of his. Gleeson, high kick towards centre wing, 
Marshall trying to fist away, collected something. Ooh. That was Edgar. Put down went Pilkey. Again, he's having one of those afternoons. O'Sullivan got it to Gleason. Towards half forward, strong mark taken by Hannah. Mill Hannah from 60 metres. Kernahan in the square. Normally a good kick. This is long and low. Kernahan out in front. And that was too easy. It is far too easy. Sandy uh, Romano Negri getting back there to help out Warhurst, but uh, really standing in a position that allowed Kernahan to lead up the middle of the ground. He was worried about the lead into the pocket. But Steve Kernahan far too smart for that, and they left the gap there for him to lead into. So Kernahan from 30 metres directly in front, looking for his third, and Carlton's fourth. This to make the margin seven points. the crowd he's missed. Got short memories here. He's worn the South Australian jumper with tremendous distinction. Today he's on the other side. Maynard. There's the siren so he needn't worry about the kick. End of the first term here at Football Park and that quarter time Carlton leads 3-4-22. Adelaide Crows 3-2-20. Bringing you up to date with round two matches. Of course, the one played last night at Carrara resulted in a victory for the visitors. North Melbourne, 15-14-104. Brisbane, 18-58. And here at Football Park, we've got a thriller at the moment with Carlton leading by 2.34-22. The Crows, 3-2-20, but it would appear Carlton kicking with the aid of what breeze there is in this quarter. The round, of course, will be completed on this Easter weekend tomorrow with three matches. 
and they are Geelong and St Kilda, Hawthorne and Sydney, and Richmond and Essendon. Some vital games there, Geelong and the Saints in particular, and can Hawthorne bounce back after their humiliating loss last week? Don't forget, uh, wherever you are around Australia, check your local guides for details. And if you're a basketball fan too, of course, the NBL season kicks off next week. Or should I say, tips off next week. Check your local guides for time. Well, Max Stevens has been down on the boundary line and will be throughout the season here in Adelaide. Maxie, any news? What do the coaches have to say at quarter time? Well, Sandy Graham Corns has simply said, forget the pretty stuff. If the ball's on the ground, don't try to get it off the ground. Just kick it and keep it going up forward, whatever you have to do. He's not that concerned. He's also explained that with it being pretty slippery, it's going to be a lo low-scoring game, so don't panic. Now, David Parkin, well, I've seen David rant and rave, but uh, David's pretty happy at this point of time, and he's just said to his guys to continue on and get first to the ball, and eventually it'll come your way. Max, just before you go, we're discussing the up here in our commentary position and from our spot it's very difficult can you give us any idea is it going to favor Carlton this term well I wouldn't say so uh, Sandy I heard Dennis say before that it was favoring the right of screen however at this point of time it's still going across the ground and maybe just slightly favoring the uh, the Carlton in this quarter but we'll have to wait and see thank you Max quick look at the statistics of this first quarter Bernie there's Carlton on top in the kicking department they did particularly well for that quarter, uh, early in the match though, and really you can't uh, take that much from it, although Negri and Madden, 10 hit outs there to Madden against Negri, and it all uh, really matters though when the ball hits the ground, who wins the ball out of that centre break, and that's very even. Yes, that's where uh, the Crows got the jump last week against the Hawks, continually and consistently winning the ball out of the centre. I thought Calvin showed plenty in that quarter. They've got to plant the seed initially, as far as Adelaide are concerned, that seed of doubt, and then just go from there. And I think already they've done a little bit of that. That's where they've got to challenge them first, win that war and go on from there. Clear skies above Football Park once more for the commencement of this second quarter. Carlton going to the right. It'll be Madden and Negri to open proceedings in the second term. Two points in it, favouring the Blues. Both of these big men having a good charge at the ball, but Negri wins at the jump. Vital that they get it away early. Verbeek, however, repels the thrust, goes back towards centre wing. Herman sweeping wide to accommodate Phillips. He can't get past Bruce Lindsay. That was a fine tackle. McDermott's in trouble. May get out of it, however. Does so, socketed by Lee, but straight to Madden, who then kicks into the man on the mark. Edgar is waiting, however, across to Ratton. Carlton put it in towards the 50 metre line. Dorotich beats Maynard. Scoots it back. He was looking for Hannah who may have to sock off the ground. He elects not to. And it could be his undoing. Thompson pressurised over the line. Loses the ball. They support each other very well in defence, the uh, Crows. Always uh, the numbers at the ball. Ready and willing to help out on every occasion. Negri jostling for front spot up against Dorrit which taken by Maynard spirals a kick back towards the centre Madden drops one McDermott always busy under the pack Jarman a hurried left foot kick up towards the half forward line was he held? the umpire says play on Hart still in there battling for the ball so too was Silvani but the end of soft is it clear Verbeek drops over it but have almost lost it finds it slippery. Rennitz gets it out to Edgar. He spoons it on towards Ratton. They're having real trouble. Meldrum at the bottom. Can't do anything with it. Ratton. Hawking's boot towards the line. And Eddie, you did go for the boundary line. The umpire says throw it in. I might have played that one yesterday, Sandy. The umpire's not all that consistent on that rule. Eddie Hocking definitely going for the boundary. Terrible rule. Boundary throw in. Falls behind Verbeek. A high kick towards the middle, missed by Lee, Lindsay, on centre wing, run down, Jarman, kicks inside the 50, Hardy's down there, battling with Rennitz, the flicks are two players coming up from the goal square, Hodges and Kernahan, eventually it's with Bassett, that's a good hand pass, away to Gleeson, forward at half back, a runner inside, that's Alvin, he's got it on centre wing, oh, it is very hard to apply a tackle in those circumstances. Two men 
who really had some speed up. Lee takes the hand pass. Regenza down towards half forward, kicks long, hodges the target, waiting behind Winnets, drops the mark, has some time, comes away, short passes, and the mark is taken by Bassett to Gleason. He's in trouble again. Corky's got him. He was taken high initially, so the free kick will go to Gleason, called against McDermott. Kick comes across the ground. Carlton need to get it on this side. This is the scoring side, and then kick with the breeze at their back. Unfortunately, uh, Sullivan's a left footer, so he runs back towards the middle, but the situation's still not too awkward for them. Warhurst on the burst to Marshall. Untidy hand pass into open space. Meldrum has it, pumps it back in. Negri goes after it. Hannah outnumbered, pursued by Smart towards the boundary line. Mill Hannah still dragged off the kick. Negri keeps it in. Well done. Negri, hard against the boundary line, kicks towards the outer side. It bounces out of bounds and will be thrown in. Well, Negri doing well to get back in defence and help out the uh, defenders, the closed defenders. Silvani, an interesting move. He's starting in the middle and then he's going back as a uh, virtual extra defender. No addition to the score in this second term. McDermott at the back combines with his vice captain. Towards centre wing, Carlton have the numbers. Silvani came over the top. They're having trouble passing half forward. Ratton takes it. Goes to that position now. Dorotich in front. Herman waiting down. Gives it away. Here's a chance for Kernahan again. Couldn't control the slippery ball. He's quickly in over Warhurst. Was he leg? Yes. Well, the umpire... I don't know whether he fell for that one or not, because I think Steve Coonahan threw himself. We'll have another look at this now. He's definitely grabbed a free kick against Warhurst. Luke O'Sullivan, who pumped the ball in initially to Kernahan, couldn't take the mark, but now he has a shot 35 metres out, slight angle. He's kicked two, given away one. He's missed that one. Well, an opportunity going begging there for Carl. Well, that was an atrocious kick by Kernahan. On occasions he can kick, kick so accurately and yet on other occasions he looks like he's just learning about the caper. 3-5 to 3-2, Lee. Is still tucked in the back pocket is Lindsay. Back to Lee, Kernahan will get him. And loses it. They may get out of trouble through Marshall. Soccer's off the ground eventually. Pass Bassett, Negri chasing him. But Bassett will have too much toe. Has it gone over the line? Yes, just on the other side. That's the side of the ground defensively as far as Adelaide are concerned, but a number of times now they've handled the ball a lot to get it out the defensive 50. This is O'Sullivan. A long kick, a centering one. Dorotich disputing the mark with Maynard, and it will be paid to Dorotich. He was in front. John Dorotich will kick from about 40 metres out. 45 degree angle. Carlton doing most of the attacking. He's kicked one. It's close. He's missed to the near side. So Carlton increased their lead. It's up to four points now. Bartlett warming up. Warhurst kicking in. That's better, going for distance. Big pack into the air, maybe a close free kick, advantage is paid for Genza to McDermott. Goes out wide to Filke, he's got plenty of runs, spears the pass in low, intended for Hodges. When it's sensing the danger across quickly, away to Verbeek, he's at left half back, kicks towards the outer side wing, Herman was up, shows good recovery, goes looking for Bassett, he's in trouble, goes off the ground intelligently, down towards the pocket, Hannah leads back in the race, but beats him out of bounds. Had a good 50 metres there, Adrian Bassett, by soccering off the ground, and now uh, deep in Carlton's attacking zone once more. Negri and Kerner. Well, they lock arms and take no part, and they throw in O'Sullivan. And a court behind, smart. It's around. With ease, but his kicks away. Edgar. Well, I think the uh, free kick was back there, Sandy. Yep. A good effort 
by Edgar. He was under uh, plenty of pressure there from Marshall. Well, Stephen Edgar goes short. Lindsay does well to affect the spoil. Marshall gets a further hand pass away. Jarman a hand to it. Back to Edgar. Runs into trouble. Gives it away. It finishes with Silvani coming from Ratton. But that kick too is why they're peppering the goals without a major result at this stage. There's plenty of opportunities for Calvin. Cavendon sitting on the bench. Started the game at uh, half back. An easy miss from Kernahan, one from Dorotich, and now that one from Silvani. Ten effective scoring shots to five. Alan Bartlett about to come onto the ground. We'll wait and see who comes off. Marshall has it in the back pocket. There, Sandy. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible that Negri could run away from anyone. Oh, you are <laughs> but he actually got away from Justin Madden. Oh, Ernie. Well, he's off the ground now, Romano Negri. Interchanged immediately. Dorotich, good mark. Bartlett's on the ground. Centering kick from Dorotich. Kernahan missed it. Pushed off the ball by Warhurst. The way to Hart. Out wide to accommodate the run of Smart. Good football by the Crows. Smart. Voice one high towards the other side. Meldrum leads in the race out there. Hocking is closing. Meldrum pulls it back towards left half forward. It bounces just inside the field of play. Stays in. Jarman controls it to McDermott. Away to Hart. Hart's at right half back. High kick through centre wing again. In front is McGuinness. Alban. Valiant attempt to mark. McGuinness in the tackle. Now Meldrum. The defensive side of left centre wing. Away to Phillips. Phillips goes down towards centre half forward, all crows there, Bartlett uncontested. To Marshall, who run it out, comes up towards centre half back, kicks towards midfield, off hands, Dean keeps it in front, well played, Gleeson to Edgar, Edgar to the attacking side again, but short of Dorotich, and the timely mark is taken by Maynard. To Bartlett, back to the defensive side they go, Lee. Lacking support. Phillips closing. Untidy hand pass. Bartlett scrambles a kick. Only as far as Silvani. He's forward at centre wing. But in trouble. Tregenza overran it. Kernahan. Intelligent hand pass. Away to Herman. He tries to centre it. Intended for Ratton. Who's got it now off the hands of Lindsay. Gleeson pushed off the kick. It finishes with Smart. Michael Smart on half back. 50 against Hannah for running over the mark. And what would have been on the main art. So uh, Hannah had very little option there. He doesn't worry about the complete distance. Perhaps he should have because he's put it straight down the throat of Justin Mack. Madden from half back. Goes towards the centre again. He wants Dorotich. Bartlett came over the top to affect the spoil. Smart. Claimed by Hannah, but illegally so. And Smart again will take it. This time he's on centre wing. Plays on to Marshall. Starting to show some influence on the game. Look at that beautiful pass to Clue. Thought about Lindsay going past, but that goes on the left foot. Caught Hodges standing still initially. Kernan will be first to it. And will be quite happy to see that go over the line. So a throw in in the Crows at left forward pocket. As Big Romano has a spell. Smith jostling for front spot, couldn't get it. Edgar scoots away, floats it to centre wing. Kernahan having to come from behind and defend. He's out to centre half forward too, Sandy. And uh, Steve Silvani playing at full forward. So David Parkin throwing the side around. Dorotich playing in the pocket alongside him. Carlton leads by five points. Madden just too much height. Down to Ian Herman. O'Sullivan leaves it for Phillips. Rennitz. McDermott now. Rennitz again. Short kick but straight to Marshall. David Marshall's left foot kick towards centre wing. Madden got a hand to it. Phillips waiting down to Rennitz. Works hard. Phillips over the back. The call coming from Meldrum. Another one to Edgar and finally they get it away to the half forward line. And O'Sullivan. Marking in front of Thompson. Tough to score at either end at the moment. Silvani overruns it but still keeps going. 
Ratton tried to spoon it out but Lindsay intercepted Silvani in over the football again Lindsay is the one who came out with it Jarman leaves it for Lee goes wide Tregenza may not keep it in play and so out of bounds once more on the outer side here at football park sky's cleared a little Carlton lead by five points that breeze is very strong it's blowing towards the left full forward pocket Carlton's end making conditions difficult for the players Jarman dragged off the kick Bassett slaps it away Warhurst confronted by Bassett who did very well he goes again Jarman put a hand in there Ratten across his body it drifts close to the boundary line and it bounced out luckily for Carlton so a throw in with the Blues leading by five points Dorotic and Bartlett Dorotic left without the ball Bartlett got it away to McDermott and kicks it towards the outer side wing again it runs towards the boundary showing plenty of courage was Dean slapping it across towards Kernahan who couldn't bring it in and it will be thrown in once more so just over 12 minutes remaining till half time as Peter Dean felt the effects of that last collision Klug and Madden brilliantly shot by Tregenza is it right half forward up comes Meldrum well played Paul Meldrum hit a couple of them away to Hannah Hannah across his body back towards the outer side wing it drifts across goes Phillips couldn't control it Hart was taken around the legs and he'll get the free kick Oh Hart aided by 50 well that's a third one against Calvin so they're mounting up and this will give Hart a chance also and the other one was against Hannah in the back line which wasn't so costly the heart will only be about 40 metres out when he has a shot at goal. And there's two that have brought them inside that 50 metre line. So this to give the Crows the lead. It's up behind play there too, Sandy. That's what he's waiting for. A bit of a wrestle there. Tommy Alvin involved. He's not waiting for it. He's shooting for goal. He's put it through. The Crows lead. first and the Crows move to 4-2 leading Carlton 3-7 I don't know how that started it's McDermott and Alvin involved and McDermott doesn't mind a bit of a, uh, a dust up and the first goal for the quarter for the Crows coming from the boot of Daryl Hart another 50 metre penalty that's two goals from 50 metre penalties to the Crows that's the only goal of the quarter just under 11 minutes remaining till half time. Madden goes up and wins it down. Phillips, Winnitz at close quarters, got it across towards Mill Hanna, who wasn't going anywhere. Jarman only as far as Ed Get now with Gleason. Gleason kicks it inside the attacking 50. What a fine kick. And the mark is taken by Dorotic. John Dorotic will kick from about 45 metres out. This to give Carlton the lead. It rides on the breeze. It looks pretty good. He's got his second. This well topsy-turvy type game here. John Dorotic doing fairly well on the forward line. Maynard wearing him fairly closely, but still two goals in these conditions. It's not a bad performance. Dorotic kicking from about 40, 45 metres out. Favoured by the breeze and on the right side for a left footer. Smith off and Murphy on for the Crows. Carlton regain a five-point lead. Madden wins it. But it's Hart who kicks high out of the centre towards Murphy who's just come onto the ground. Couldn't take the mark. And we'll find ourselves with another bounce. Still really right in the middle. Carlton's pace is worrying the Crows. He's just sticking with them today. Matt. Certainly having more success out of the centre. Bassett, Verbeek, Dean. Well snubbed over. Dean will have to go again. Oh, Tregenza well played. Twisted out of trouble. Puts it in front of Murphy. He's inside 50. Can he get clear? Swings round onto the left foot. 
floats it high, but there's only two Carlton players there. Edgar has it. He's got David Kernahan wide. Can sweep it off towards Madden, who will sprint towards the boundary line. Won't get there in time, however. And another throw. I think Kernahan preferred the boundary line there, Sandy. You are a hard man, dude. Throw in on centre wing. Madden again. With that height advantage. Filthy. He's got one a little high. And he's quick to play on ground. Filthy steps the office. Spoiled. Dean. They'll be very pleased to have Peter Dean back in this lineup. He's a fine player. Phillips. Defending. Going towards the wing. Kernahan caught at the back. Thompson. Hand pass goes astray. Marshall ducked his head and popped up. Well, that was coming from Marshall because Sull uh, Sullivan was really charging at him. He put his head down, not ducking it, I think he just put his head down and grabbed the ball. Clue goes on with the job. Hodges! Got the ride but couldn't take it. And it's defensively taken through for one behind by Simon Burbick. Carlton by four points. Entertaining game this one. Rugged affair. Simon Verbeek goes in short, taken by Phillips. They're picking up their men from the kickoff there, the Crows. Alden comes away from half back, kicks towards midfield. Lee favoured by the kick, couldn't hang on. Kernahan down towards left half forward, needs support. No, he doesn't. He goes alone. A centering kick. Doritich and Maynard won out the strength of Doritich. Maynard is a very good mark, but one of those players who needs a run. He's not physically all that strong, and body to body, it was Doritic who prevailed. Yes, in a one-out situation, Doritic will win all the time. He's kicking at his third. This for a ten-point lead. John Doritic. It's close. He missed. Narrowly. Carlton by five points, just over seven minutes remaining till the half. And Marshall to kick it in. And Carlton posts the men out wide. Marshall kicks towards Bartlett. He takes a good mark, plays on immediately to Lindsay up from the back pocket. Long waking kick towards centre wing. Oh, what a great mark is taken there by Peter Dean. To his feet and plays on immediately and gets it to Gleeson. Tucked on the members' wing. Adrian Gleeson. Looks for Kernahan. Oh, he got the ride. But they've given him that. Oh, and a 50 metre penalty as well. No, they've given away a couple of 50s that have resulted in goals. That's the danger with that rule, of course, isn't it? If the players misread what they think the decision yeah. is going to be. And and I think that was an honest mistake. That's yeah. exactly what happened then, yes. So Kernahan now has the opportunity to score his third. Yeah, the free kick against Warhurst, and then Marshall, I'm not sure which way it was going. Now a uh, certain goal almost to Coonahan. The old chain reaction, 25 metres out, almost directly in front. And he makes no mistake. So Steve Coonahan gets his third. And it allows Carlton to sneak away to an 11-point lead. 5-8, plays 4-3. We'll just have a look at that again. Kernahan going for the fly, but Warhurst, Warhurst right into his back. It was a, no doubt a free kick to Kernahan. And uh, once that whistle goes, the players must be aware that they should stop and not give that 50-metre penalty. Approaching half-time. The biggest lead in the game so far. Carlton out by 11 points. Madden, clean possession to Gleeson. He kicked it straight back into Madden. Umpire calls for it. Simon Verbeek. Bounce alongside the centre circle. Madden and Murphy, one by the former. Meldrum left it behind. Hocking in the grasp. Gleeson camped over the ball. Hard work in there. And another bounce. So the Crows 
Finding it tougher today. Fairy tale start as far as their AFL fortunes were concerned against the Hawks under lights Friday week ago, but Carlton playing very well so far this afternoon. Can they sustain it? Free kick to Madden. The Crows have, the Crows have made some changes in defence. Warhurst now back on uh, Doritich. Untidy kick from Madden intended for Phillips. O'Sullivan run down from behind by Thompson. O'Sullivan to get the free all too long in the tackle. He's inside the centre square. Out towards right centre wing. 5-8 Carlton. Adelaide 4-3. And Sullivan barking the instructions. Hand passes eventually. Silvani had run up from half back. Kicks well inside the 50. Wide of Kernahan. It's off hands. Maynard's hand pass to Hawking. Back it comes to Maynard. <laughs> it's going to be a free kick, I think, for the Crows. It would have gone to Hawking. Yeah. Meantime, they play on around the outer side. Bartlett's kick is marked brilliantly by the running Jarman hard against the boundary line. Who wants to play on? He's gone over the line. That will not please him. The other change is Maynard now is playing on Hannah. And Smart is picking up Steve Coonahan. So we have a throw in. Centre wing at the outer side. Bartlett doing the ruck work. Giving Negri a spell. Jarman, who was disappointed when he stepped over the line, has the free kick. There's to half forward. Another free kick going away of Carlton has been picked out. Taken by Tommy Alvin. And sweep it wide to Verbeek. Thought about Phillips short, but then decides to go longer towards Mill Hannah. Maynard. As Dennis has said, he could take a grab. He's at half back. Floats it high. Ah. Murphy it is. Takes them out. Murphy just forward of centre. Goes long. That's a good kick by Murphy. Down towards Hodges in the back. Couldn't complete the mark. Silvani on the last line of defence. Just dribbles it round the corner but gains 30 metres. And we'll have a throw in in the Crows' right forward pocket. They'll trail by 11 points. Ian Herman's got the ball in there, and the umpire wants it. 5-8 to 4-3, the Crows needing a goal here. Madden and Klug do the ruck work. Madden, run it down nicely, off the ground by Edgar. Bassett couldn't control it, Tregenza did well, and again off the ground, only as far as Silvani. He boots it back towards the outer side, Marshall goes back and takes a good mark. A bit of courage there. Plays on immediately. Not a good kick though. Wastes it. Carlton have got the numbers. Verbeek's hand pass not particularly good. Brilliantly played by Murphy to Klug. Klug snaps and gets the goal. Great stuff by Murphy. Adelaide a 5-3. Carlton a 5-8. Well, Carlton have had the opportunities in this quarter to really... Uh get some sort of advantage over the Crows they haven't done it, they're poor kicking a goal could be costly because the Crows once they get the ball up on the forward line Murphy a very good handball to Klug and uh, they've really stayed within touch without being outstanding throughout the quarter very handy goal for the Crows they trail by 5 points Phillips takes it out of the centre for Carlton down towards Dorothy, who soccers off the ground Edgar is there from the Blues wanted to go wider but well done by Tregenza. Beautifully played. McDermott gives it away to Lee and the Crows are out of trouble. Up towards their half forward line. Murphy couldn't take it. The beak heads towards the line. So just on two minutes remaining in this first half. And set for a dour struggle in this second half. Madden applies the tackle. Big man's going to have to pick himself up and do the ruck work again because we've got a bounce. One of the jokers characters of the league is Justin Madden. Does the leaning on Klug. It's not a good bounce. Trying to 
forced his way through, or Lindsay went in strongly, and again over the line. Bruce Lindsay, one of the game's veterans. 5-8 to 5-3. Klug again doing the work from behind. Won the tap, but that was all. Past Robbie Thompson it goes. Couldn't take it. Finishes up with Thompson, however, and he just flicks it back towards the half-forward flank. Alvin is there, opposed to McGuinness. Together they tumble over the line with the football. And another throw. We're inside one minute now, the first half. Madden and Murphy, Jarman at the back. Marshall, flicking it high to half-forward. They dearly love another one before the half-time break. Peter Dean got in trouble but then got out of it beautifully scooping it to Gleeson off to Edgar the Blues are running now they could score none before half time and Kernahan takes the mark great pass yes no pressure though applied by the Crows through midfield Edgar who's playing quite well in trouble starting in the half back line where Klug was caught behind Dean Kernahan has kicked three two in the first term and one in this quarter just to make the margin 11 points it'll be the last kick of the first half there is the kick right on Simon time and he's missed it. one behind so Carlton not taking advantage of the scoring shots that they had in that first half their lead is just one straight goal and the Crows Although finding it considerably tougher than they did last week, will come out and kick with the breeze in the third quarter. Well, I think Calvin have done their homework coming into this game. David Parkin came across and watched the match against Hawthorne. They've hit a lot of runners. They've closed down some of the key players as far as the Crows are concerned. McGuinness in particular has been quiet so far. Now, whether they can maintain that remains to be seen. But the pace, I think, of Calvin has caused a few problems so far. So at half-time, it's Carlton by six points, 5-9 to 
six points the margin at half time here at Football Park. Carlton 5 9 39, the Adelaide Crows 5 3 33, and Bernie the Blues had their chances in that quarter but didn't take advantage of them. Yes, well they kicked 2 5 to 2 1 in that quarter and they had plenty of ball on that forward line. Coonahan couldn't kick straight, Dorotic couldn't kick straight, they had plenty of opportunities. They have got a very flexible forward line. So many uh, players are capable of kicking goals. The Adelaide forward line doesn't look all that good, Sandy. They've got the ball down there on a number of occasions. Carlton are working hard to get back in defence and making it very difficult for Hodges to lead. But I think uh, Carlton would be disappointed that they have not got a bigger lead at half time. And two 50 metre penalties. You're, you're laughing at signs. You mustn't do that. <laughs> two, well known oh, over here, okay. isn't he? No, he'll, he'll slay us. Two 50 metre penalties that could prove costly. Well, costly because they both resulted in goals to the Crows, and uh, really they cannot afford to do that, Carlton, when uh, the ball is in that region. Have a look at the stats. Carlton in front, as you would expect, I think, because they've had much more of the ball. I think. To Adelaide's credit, they have worked hard to get back in defence, and uh, let's see what we can pick out of that. Hit outs 26 to 6. Well, there you go. Negri was taken from the ground in the second quarter, and this just allowed Madden to take over completely in the ruck. Centre breaks, though, still very even, but 450 metre penalties to Adelaide and only one to Carlton. So Carlton really must work hard to cut that out of the game. Actually, Bernie, we uh, just saw that Don Scott sign. We've had a call from him and he's very keen to see the players of the Fosters Cup again. Oh, Donald, we better not let him down then, Sandy. <laughs> Let's have a look at them now. Hang on a sec. The Don Scott Fan Club? No, sir, you're not seeing things. It really is the Don Scott Fan Club. Enough of that. Let's get down to the action. Here's Bears captain Roger Merritt, who executed the perfect throw, and it resulted in a goal to Cameron O'Brien. The Foster's Cup introduced us to the Adelaide Crows for the first time. However, I wonder when Bruce Lindsay and Scott Lee first met. Right now, I would say. Also, from the state of the check side comes a new variation of the short pass, as demonstrated by Tony McGuinness. Although this one found the man, I don't think it'll catch on. But stranger things have happened in football, like the Don Scott Fan Club. To the bump of the Foster's Cup, and Tiger Trent Nichols was flattened by demon Simon Eichold. But somehow, I think that Gary Lyon may have just over-exaggerated this flash with Andy Goodwin. The award for the best shepherd of the Foster's Cup goes to this field umpire for stopping Hawk Chris Whitman from receiving a Dermot Brereton hand pass. Sydney and North Melbourne played their match at the Canberra Raiders home ground and Wayne Schwoss scored the best try of the series. Now what's the saying? Old footballers never die. Funny, I thought these two went out to pasture just a couple of years ago. Well, I wonder how long it'll be before they have their own fan club. To the marks of the Foster's Cup and Man Mountain's Stuart Lowe came from nowhere to take this courageous grab. While Tiger recruit Terry Keyes flew high over the pack to capture this beauty. And as we watch Dermot leapfrog Tony Hall and look at the umpire in the sun visor, we're left with a few things to ponder. Just who is this masked man? Oh no, not again. And this one, well, exactly. Well, Donnie, actually, Bernie, I believe he's a little upset that he couldn't be here today. I think they had the tomatoes ready for him, actually, Sandy, the rotten ones. <laughs> oh, well, let's take a break and we'll go out with our football song and then come back for the second half here at Football Park. But for the moment, let's play football. <laughs>
Welcome back to Football Park where the West Australian Football League kicks off their home and away series next week and officials are expecting their biggest year since the advent of the West Coast Eagles back in 1987. In fact, it's going to be quite an historical year because there are going to be a number of rule changes made within the WAFL. With this report, here's Neil Poe. When the first Eagles team ran onto Subiaco Oval to play Richmond in 1987, the face of football in WA was changed forever, and for the local competition, not for the better. The eight WAFL clubs suffered on and off the ground. The player drain was accompanied by a loss of sponsors and a dramatic decline in attendances. The 87 grand final between Claremont and Subiaco was the first since 1956 to attract less than 35,000 fans. In 1988, that figure fell to just 28,000. But four full seasons down the track, there's a feeling of revival and an air of optimism. The clubs now realise that their market is at the community level and they're doing a lot of work on membership, a lot of work on promoting club image around and I think you'll find that in 1991 there'll be a very good resurgence and I think in the years to come it can only get better. Reigning Premiership coach John Todd, this season chasing his fifth flag with Swan Districts, believes that on field the corner has already been turned. I think overall the standard last year was uh, exceptional. Some of the games were perhaps uh, as good if not better than AFL football and uh, they were close and it all argues well for this coming season. To accelerate the league's recovery, the WA Football Commission has taken a punt on two major rule changes it hopes will draw the crowds back. A top five will operate in this year's finals and the WAFL will become the first major Australian football league to adopt the send-off rule, where a player can be ordered out of the game without replacement if the umpires believe he is guilty of deliberately striking, kicking or elbowing another player to cause bodily harm or for assaulting an umpire. If you play by the rules, this game is a great game. Courage, the whole lot to play. To run on the field, you've got to have courage. But what we're saying is if you want to play outside those rules, if you want to viciously punch, kick or maim someone in the street, you go to jail. On the football field, if you want to do it, it doesn't help our game. Get off the ground. While the clubs agree in principle, they aren't happy that an infringing player can't be replaced. So I hope that, you know, it's not enforced strongly and uh, I hope that, you know, they're sensible enough to uh, realise that if a player is sent off that we can replace that player. I think that's important because our game just will not tolerate having, you know, uh, one player short. Claremont coach Gerard Neesham agrees, although he would like to see the send-off rule available for the grand final. Um, most highly esteemed game, which is a grand final, is one where, where it is warranted because people don't worry about next year, they just worry about that particular game and win at all costs. So maybe that will improve that game. The introduction of a top five in an eight-team competition is a marketing ploy unashamedly designed by the Commission to maintain interest in the battle for a finals berth and to give the team that finishes the season on a roll, as East Perth did last year, a chance at the flag. The public want a very good final round series and they want to see their sides have a go. Now we have an obligation to offer them. The AFL have gone to six. Middle you can say you've got more teams, but they've gone to six. What I think you'll find this year is the five teams with double headers in the finals, I believe will be really good creative marketing for football. And so some radical changes being made by the West Australian Football League. Their season kicks off next week and we wish them well. We'll take a break here at Football Park, Carlton leads the Crows by six points. We'll be back with you after this word from the Scud Missile. Hi, I'm Eddie Hocking from the Adelaide Crows and you're watching footy on Channel 7.
Welcome back to Football Park. We've got the Adelaide Crows already out on the ground. Carlton to make their way out shortly. Just looking at the flags here at the ground. I wonder if that wind has picked up. Uh, Max Stevens, you're down on the ground. What do you think, Max? Well, Sandy, definitely, and uh, it will favour the Adelaide Crows this quarter. Now, the ground here, just for your own interest, uh, it, it's very difficult to predict what the wind's going to do because it's very similar to Waverley in Melbourne. So when it's blowing across the ground, the idea is to kick straight down the ground because the pockets on either side in the flanks, the wind there is uh, very swirly. So it's hard to predict, as we saw before with a couple of the Carlton boys when they were kicking for goal down that end. Now, I don't know what I've done right this week, but Graham Corns um, didn't let me into the rooms, but someone's left the door open. And uh, Graham has said, don't wait for the ball to come to you, to his players. He said, uh, don't sit back. He wants to see them charge forward. So that's the situation from the ground. Thank you, Max. Let's now, gentlemen, have a look at some of the individual performances so far in this game. Maybe you mean Max. Get the ball, Max. Adrian Gleeson, 13 and 5, very busy as you can see, 9 kicks in the first quarter, 8 possessions in the second term, and that's an area where Carlton are doing very well. David Marshall across that centre line has been a very handy player, 11 kicks and 4 handballs, worked hard to get back in defence. Stephen Kernahan, very strong, a couple of goals in that first term, then had a lapse with his kicking, but has 3 to the moment, 3-3 three, three for Stephen Kernahan, and obviously a key player in determining the outcome of this game. And Andrew Jarman, he looks better and better all the time. Nine kicks, four hand passes, getting in at the bottom of the pack. Started off with Silvani as a, an opponent, but uh, Silvani was quickly moved into that forward line, but he's been very busy. Andrew Phillips, another of the small brigade, 13 possessions to half time, and as I said, if they can continue on in that form, those smaller players, Adelaide will have some problems. And Simon Tregenza, 10 kicks, only one hand pass, but working hard, a couple of good interceptions and uh, one of the very good Adelaide centre-line players. Looks as though we've got a minor hold-up with a ball that is not 100%. Actually, the umpires have done a pretty good job so far in that first half. Not an easy game to umpire. It's been pretty scrambly. Players trying to slap the ball out on occasions. But they've been reasonably well received for Melbourne-based umpires. Now, that's nothing loaded, what I'm saying there, Sandy. Don't look at me like that, but sometimes interstate fans take their wrath out on the interstate umpires. Interchange players just making their way onto the benches. Cabot and Herman, Smith and Murphy, and Degree back into the ruck. So Madden won't have it all his own way at the start of this second half. So just about set to go. In the second half, the margin is six points favouring Carlton. But the Adelaide Crows kicking with the advantage of this breeze. They've got Scott Hodges down there at full forward. He's kicked just the one goal at the moment. That was in the first quarter. Negri back and bouncing, ready to go. The up against Madden. Here we go. Third quarter at Football Park. Charge from Negri, he wins it. Silvani tried to get it out of the bottom. The umpire goes to ground after hitting Filthy, but he's okay. Hocking, oh, like lightning, he got that ball out. The kick is a poor one, however, and the mark is taken by Brett Ratt. Plays on quickly to Kernahan. Flicks it wide towards the wing, looking to accommodate Melbourne. Over his head it goes. Scott Lee's hand pass is a poor one. Lindsay did well to try and get it down to Tregenza. Got boot the ball, but only just. Hocking in over the top. McDermott almost threw it out to Lindsay. He's got players going past, but elects to take the kick himself. It's long in towards full forward, and has just gone over the line for one behind. Great desperation by Bassett. 5-4 plays 5-9. Peter Dean to bring the ball back into play. Melbourne goes wide. Dean follows him. On with the hand pass to Phillips, who kicks to the wing. Ball spilling free. Herman in a little late to try and scoop it back into play after Scott Lee missed the mark. So a throw in right on the wing. Madden and Negri have been at it for most of the day and it will continue. 
Marshall couldn't take it at the back. McGuinness over ramp. Negri, the big man takes it and he's clear, but it's a poor kick. Dropping short. Lindsay stands his ground. Negri rides the bump. Taken towards the centre wing once more. And another throw in. Wouldn't like to be sandwiched between O'Sullivan and McDermott. Two very solid customers. Madden this time front spot, but Negri was able to flick it over the back. Kicking to position is poor, however. Verbeek, no one on the mark, is able to scoot away. Kick back towards the centre. Over the head of Gleeson, taken by Jarman. Is a chance for the Crows because Murphy's wide. Klug is there with him. Spoon towards the boundary line by Rennitz. Silvani chasing. Kept in play. At the back is Klug. Off towards McGuinness. At least that was the player he was looking for. Albert intercepts. Now Jarman. Filky. Plenty of pace. Kicks back towards half forward. Looking for Hart. Can't find him. Dean. A hurry kick back towards the middle. And Madden fists away. Did well. Got it down to Herman. Out wide. This is Verbeek. He's on centre wing. He goes down towards half forward. Great desperation in defence down there from Maynard to knock it away from Hannah. And they bring it out. McDermott gets the hand pass to Negri. He got it from Smart initially. Now it's back with McDermott towards half forward. Picked up low to the ground by Murphy. Over the top to Hart. That's holding the ball surely. No, play goes on. When it's bumped off it. Great desperation shown by Murphy and in turn Hart. And there's going to be a free kick to win it somewhere in there. A lot of body work, so to pick that one up. Still, Winnitz has the ball, and that's the main thing. He's up from the back pocket. Picks towards the outer side wing, waiting behind Filkey. Negri came back and got a hand in there, and has a word to Filkey about perhaps calling in that situation as the ball just tumbled across the boundary line. There's the throw in. Still drifting in the breeze. Marshall's hand pass, not a particularly effective one. Silvani kicks towards half forward Smart did well, got it on the ground then had the misfortune to slip Latin goes in and there's going to be a free kick and it's going Adelaide's way it will be taken I think by Smart Smart across the ground intended for Marshall, up comes Dean knocks it forward, Tregenza stood his ground well, this is Clue across his body, kicks inside 50 Great mark taken by Verbeek going back. What a ton of courage that display. Verbeek squares the ball. Edgar in the opposite back pocket with some time. Goes for distance around the outer side. So Barney's the target. And what a great mark that was. So the football rising at the present time. Although they've given it away, Carlton. This is McDermott. Valiant spoil there, diving across the boot. By Silvani, eventually it comes across towards Phillips, now McGuinness. Tony McGuinness' kick is partly smothered as well. It's tight and it's tough out there at the moment. Thompson waiting for the ball to come out and he's immediately claimed as soon as he touches it. Lee at the bottom of the pack, McGuinness over the top of Alvin. Phillips in turn over the top, but it's McGuinness who comes away. Sweeping to Jarman on centre wing. Jarman's left foot kick is high, floating right it's underneath this ball and he takes the mark at half back. Centering for Melbourne. Carlton defending stoutly at the moment. Edgar still on the half-back flank. And that is a shocking kick. Straight into the man on the mark in Jarman. Clue inside 50. Picks it up now and from the boundary line. Kicks towards Hodges. Kernahan is there with him. Who's going to be first to recover? Hodges will shut down on the line. The umpire said play on and Kernahan clears again. Only as far as Jarman goes. Inside 50, and Clue, who had such a grand week against Hawthorne, when he kicked four goals. He hasn't done much early, but finding a bit of space here, Clue. Yep. There's the kick. Into the square. Over the top, that's a goal. John Clue gets his second, and the Crows hit back. They lead 6-4 to Carlton, 5-9. And very good play here from Hodges in the square as we have a look at that mark again from Klug. Charman turning around quickly, noticing Klug by himself there in that pocket. 
And the kick from about 50 metres out. Have a look at this on the goal line where Hodges forces himself back and kept Kernahan out of the contest. So the Crows have grabbed the lead. 40 plays 39. Madden and Negri. Won decisively by Madden towards half forward. Lee goes back. Away to Filkey. He's a will of the wisp. He swings it out wide. Intended for Lindsay. Brought down by Edgar. Not allowed to go on. This is Watton. Forward of half back. Kicks through centre wing towards half forward. And Sullivan up. Smart waiting behind. Robbed of it by Phillips. Now he's away about 70 metres from goal. Goes looking for Dorotich. And that was a good kick. Honouring what was a good lead. Yes, they've uh, found plenty of space in the forward line with Dorotich, Kernahan, Hannah. Three very good forwards. If they get the ball moving quickly, Carlton are capable of kicking a bag full of goals if they kick straight, which they didn't in that first half. He'll kick from about 40 metres. Swinging back. It's a goal. Carlton back in front. Dorotich has three. Three goals, two to John Dorotich. One goal, two in that second quarter. But uh, plenty of space to lead into in the forward line there for Dorotich. Into that pocket on the right side of his body for a left footer to be kicking at goal. Into the breeze, just allowed it to drift back on that breeze. And John Dorotich proving a handful on that forward line. So the Blues by five points. Negri and Madden. Bounce favours Negri, who does well. Hart missed it, taken by Silvani. Lee dropping back. Plays on immediately, that's ambitious. Put it away though, Lindsay. Smothered superbly by Silvani. Bond got it across to Phillips. Over the head of Kernahan. Hannah comes up, looking for support. Bond again. Not a good hand pass. Coming through is Lee. Gets a second opportunity. Slaps it out. Only as far as Phillips was he held without it. Not according to the umpire. O'Sullivan smothered superbly off the boot down there by McDermott. Or was it Filky? It was Filky who lunged on the boot. Kick comes up from Thompson. Mark is taken by Marshall. Now he's away. Kicks towards centre wing. Verbeek got a fist on it. Tregenza overran it, tried to shock her. Edgar lunges at that one. Tregenza on top of him. And the umpire's got to pull it up. Yeah, should he have lost the penny? He might have been a little bit fortunate there because uh, the Crows player did everything possible and everything right. He just stood there and held the Guernsey, put his arm up. And a lack of consistency there by the umpire. Ball at centre wing. Negri got a touch to it. The beat through. Tregenza lost sight of it for a moment. Opens the door for Tim Rennitz. Kicks up towards Kernahan and Hannah. Phillips waiting down. He's solidly met. We'll have another bounce. Inside 50 for Carlton. The de defensive side of the game from both these sides has been enormous in this third quarter. Two great smothers by Steve Silvani. We saw one there from Grant Filkey as well. And also one from Adrian Gleeson. Probably more than you'd normally see in a game. Kernahan to Phillips. Kernahan again. Boot the ball down towards Hannah. Filthy McDermott from the back pocket. Clears well. Madden and Negri. Negri front spot. McGinnis down to Marshall. They're away again. And the mark taken by Michael Murphy. Plays on to Lindsay. Stacks it in towards the pocket. A little too far for Eddie Hocking. Well, I love Bruce Lindsay here with the chant of Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. I also love Eddie Hocking. It's in the right forward pocket for the Crows. Negri and Madden. Silvani tries to slap it out. Hart combines with Murphy. Well, he kicks that deep in towards full forward and Kernahan does well to defend through giving away just the one behind. It's very strong, David Kernahan, body to body. Scoreline sees Carlton 6-9, Adelaide 6-4. Some indecision from Kernahan. Fits into the members' side. Madden was up in front. 
through his hands. Tregenza wedding behind, pumps it back in, and the man who was standing the mouth punches had that initial break. And he was able to come up and take the mark. He was standing back for the kick in. It gave him a start of about, I suppose, 15 metres on Kernahan, who sensed the danger when Tregenza got the ball, but he couldn't make up the difference. Yeah, that's all that's needed these days, Dennis, too. Maybe not even 15 metres. You only need to give the uh, fullback five metres these days. Hodges, thinking it is set, and he kicks clearly. The Crows are back in front. Seesawing the fair, Adelaide is 7-5, Carlton is 6-9. Yes, Hodges, two goals from two good strong chest marks. And uh, a lot of indecision there from Kernahan. Took a long time to get the ball out. So I'm, uh, Justin Madden there, not really attacking the ball all that hard in the air. His marking's really gone off, and this allowed Hodges to chip in and take that strong chest mark. 47 plays 45, there's the time remaining. Bounce back in the middle, Negri and Madden. Negri wins it down, hard out of the middle. Towards half forward, going back is Bond, plenty of time. Something that's been scarce, got it across to Alban. O'Sullivan came up to meet the ball, still he chases it. Thompson chasing him, and Sullivan comes back on his left side, centering kick of beauty. Kernahan. Steve Kernahan wants to go on and does. Got it across to Phillips, to Gleason, Dorotich. I'm not sure that was the intention, but Dorotich has got the ball about five metres out. Well, I'm sure it wasn't the intention, Dennis, but uh, really smart. He was backing his judgment there and just let Kernahan slip away from him. He was looking at the ball rather than staying with his man. Dorotic has got three. He's got his fourth. Four goals to John Dorotic. And Carlton Lee. I don't know whether the midfielders for the Crows are getting back and helping the defence as they should. Because too many spaces have been created there for the uh, Carlton forwards. Dorotic four goals. Kernahan three. We look at that play again. Gleeson. Far too easily, no pressure of being applied by the Crows, and Dorotic taking the easiest of chess marks. Carlton leads by four points. Negri starts this running charge and then crops under the ball. Madden wins it. Thompson soccers down towards the half forward line. A two on one duel here. Alvin and Ratton win out. It's the latter who gains 25 metres towards centre wing. Kept in play by Filthy. Could have almost been free kick a couple of times. Marshall now. Hooks with the left foot. Up towards half forward. Was looking for three. Nipping in front to take a good mark is Tommy Alvin. He's got Silvani alone at half back. Hodges thought about getting him from behind. The hand pass is not a good one. Jarman is like lightning. Spoons it out. Rennett supplies the tackle and tries to tuck it out the back door. Hart gives it to Marshall. Promising here. Hodges on the lead. So Hodges has kicked two. One in the first and one in the third. Magnificent lead again by Hodges, but uh, the Adelaide Crows really work hard at uh, getting the numbers around the ball, supporting each other. If the first handball goes astray, there's always two or three players backing up. Kick's going to go right across the face of goal and over the line in the left forward pocket. Not a good kick at all from Hodges. He uh, leant back on that one. Didn't follow through. Silvani at the back does the ruck work, but it goes straight to McDermott, who shoots the wall goal and he's kicked that. Almost a miraculous goal, wasn't it, Sandy? I thought it was. I thought can't it was. trust the crowd down that end, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly made something out of nothing there, McDermott. That goal umpire not easily swayed. <laughs> so just the behind, David Kernahan quickly back into play. Peter Dean the flyer from the back, couldn't take it, but he recovers well. Wanted to give it to Edgar. Intercepting is Michael Murphy. Does well. McGuinness from 50 metres. Standing start. Pops it. In the full forward, right in the hand there is the skipper. And Hopkins is also doing well, Sandy. He got in the way of Kernahan and made sure that he couldn't get back to the contest. And he didn't really shepherd him out, but he just made sure that Kernahan could not compete. Well, he won't miss this one. Directly in front, he goes. The Crows are back in front. 
And it's good corner by the Crows. And it's worked hard to get the ball down in that forward line. And when they do get it down there, they have some movement from the forwards. McDermott this time getting back there. Murphy, who worked hard to get in that contest. Here's McGuinness. Could have given the hand pass off, but decided to kick it himself. And as you can see, Hodges just got in the way off Kerner hand. And this enabled McDermott to take an easy mark. Five lead changes in the quarter so far. Now Adelaide lead by three points, 54 to 51. Just over 11 minutes remaining till three-quarter time. It's been nip and tuck all afternoon. Bounce favours Negri. Who hits it about 20 metres only as far as Meldrum. Charged down by Tregenza. It spills wide, taken by Bassett. Phillips, long kick inside the attacking 50. Kernahan went back. Maynard's hand pass not good. Kernahan. Harris there by Smart, who got a toe poke on the ball. Kernahan slaps it out. Gleason goes looking for Bond. Bilkey was in there desperately. Gleason snaps down towards the forward pocket. Hannah. Hannah hard against the boundary line. It won't be easy. No doubt he'll run around here. It's been pretty quiet, Hannah, actually. Hasn't done a lot, started off on the forward line, was moved to the back line in that second quarter. A very tight angle now. Hart is just away to the right there, you can't see him, but he's not far away. Hannah goes, Hart comes in. Hannah's kick not a good one, it slides right across the face. Off hands taken by Nigel Smart on the burst. Kicks it out wide. Murphy leads in the race out there. He's got some space too. Closing is Meldrum. Good tackle, Meldrum. Took him front on, and the ball spills out of bounds. Throw in the attacking side of right centre wing for Carlton. Graham Corns on his birthday. He'll be an Eric's. Madden's got the ball. Kicks towards centre half forward. Kernahan showed the better judgment. Kernahan goes short towards the pocket. Dorotich went down off the ball. The umpire had a perfect sight of it. Hart tracks it across the boundary line. It will be thrown in. And Hart was working to get back in the way of Dorotich there to cut off that lead. So maybe they're learning the lesson. The on ball is to get back there and fill up the gaps. Under 10 minutes remaining in this vital third term. McDermott doing some heavy work at the back. Eventually spooned out towards Thompson who gets a short kick but only as far as O'Sullivan. He'll swing round onto that left foot and pulls a little too far. One behind. 7-10 plays 8-6. Two points in it. At the moment, the Crows way. Negri from behind. Couldn't take. Madden waits at the back. <laughs> Somehow, sock is it clear. Bond. Inside 50, sweeps it to Hannah. This looks dangerous for the Crows. Mill Hannah runs into the open goal and puts it straight through. His first, and Carlton hits back to take a four-point lead. 8-10, plays 8-6. Brilliant use of the handball there from Bond. And as I said earlier in this quarter, some uh, fantastic smothers. Madden showing great skills there, getting the ball out. Silvani, who's uh, one of the players who's, who has been smothering very well, three in this quarter, but a sweeping hand pass there from Bond, setting up for Hannah, who finishes it off. And so the seesawing struggle continues. One moment Carlton, the next minute the Crows. Clue gets the handball away to Philpy. Runs in towards half four, then pumps it long. Smith is down there, it goes over the back. Hodges now giving chase on Kernahan, who's able to swing round. Pull it round his body. Player he was looking for was Adrian Bassett. Edgar gives him support. Good work by Phillips to Gleeson. Out of trouble he goes. Bond caught trying to turn out of position. Could have almost given away the free kick. Kernahan at the bottom. Works hard. Gets it clear. O'Sullivan with his strength. Draws away. He has a bounce. Going to have to pull it back to centre it towards Hannah. Well spoiled by Warhurst. Only as far as Bond. 
Trudge one tackle. Steady. Jarman gets it from behind, but Bond gets his kick. Coming back. Has it come back far enough? It has it. Right goal. Where's Carlton doing well now, Sandy? Chris Bond's first goal, and Carlton again open out to a 10-point lead. Luke He's had a hand in both, hasn't he? He has, and Luke O'Sullivan showing explosive pace and strength, as Sandy called. But his pace also a big factor. He centred the ball, got it back in front of goal there instead of going into the pocket. Excellent play there from uh, Luke O'Sullivan and Chris Bond kicking his first. Instrumental in the previous goal too. Carlton now, skip away to lead by 10 points. Phillips out of the centre, kicking towards half forward. Bassett couldn't control it. Marshall's got it. Under pressure, got it to Warhurst, who boots it out wide, collected as he kicked. Kluge comes up to meet it now. Edgar has played well, put him under pressure. Dean comes away with the ball. Carlton looking good suddenly. Alvin inside the attacking 50. Warhurst leading back in the race, running out of space, takes it across the boundary line and will have a throw in. The other thing today, uh, Dennis, Tony McGuinness has not been in the play at all. He's been tagged by Tommy Alvin, whether on the ball or when he goes into the forward line changing and he's had no effect on the game whatsoever. David Parkin there in the gloom, on the phone. Throw in. Dorotich, wide of the congestion. Hannah. It spills to Ratten, smothered by Filkey. O'Sullivan was taken high. O'Sullivan, wanting to go on with it with Jarman. O'Sullivan needs to be taken away by his teammates to go back and have this kick. Are you worried about fighting after he kicks a goal, Dennis? Is that the go? I would think so. Brownlow medal is talking like that. <laughs> well, don't give the ball away now. He's only, what, 20 metres out having a shot at goal. Don't waste it. Luke O'Sullivan. There's a free kick again. And just a tackle slipping a little bit high. Return 23 on Thursday. 20 metres out. Has kicked it. Carlton 10-10, Adelaide 8-6. And they're in danger now, the Crows, of slipping out of this. They need to stay in touch. Well, the one ballers are struggling, as I said. McGuinness has had no effect whatsoever on the game. Let's have a look at that infringement again. The tackle by McGuinness, not a real lot in that. He's maybe a bit lucky to get that free kick. Umpires often are not willing to pay those free kicks in front of goal. Sixteen points, and this is the greatest margin we've seen in this game to date. Favouring Carlton, Madden and Negri, won by the latter. Murphy and Lindsay could have battled it, instead they may lose it. Madden got a fist to it. Jarman's kick is only short, straight to Silvani. They're winning it away, out of the middle. Phillips pumps them up towards the half-forward line once again. Kernahan gave a bit of a note. It goes unnoticed. Warhurst first to it, claimed by Hannah and ripped towards the boundary line. Smart takes it in the back pocket. He's written into the ground. But they've got backup support. Maynard gets it away to Filky, and the Crows are out of trouble. He's got his skipper wide with plenty of room. Chris McDermott, one bounce on the outer wing. They want a couple of goals, and they want them quickly. The Crows, if they're going to be in this, Smith is beaten for the ball. It's kept in play, however, by Alan Barker. They've got the chance here. Melbourne, however, takes it. Kicks Carlton towards the half-back line once again, but only as far as McDermott. Oh, he's gone towards Marshall, right back in the centre. David Marshall stabs, but not quite short enough. Phillips receives once more. Carlton defence standing strong. Bond lost sight of it. Lee with him. Bond gets front spot and scoots away. Gives it to Hannah, who's still outside 50. Around Maynard. Back to Bond. Bond shoots in towards Kernahan. Out he comes. Dorotich is there as well. And John Dorotich has kicked four. And this to make it very tough for the Crows. I think you've got to say, Sandy, that David Parkin has timed the introduction of Bond very nicely indeed. He's really had an influence in the last... I suppose 10 minutes or so of this game. Given them some real bite and pace, hasn't he? Yes. Combining there very well with Mill Hanna for the second time. So Dorotich got uh, three focal points up there. Dorotich, Kernahan, and Hanna now. Dorotich has four, Kernahan has three, and Hanna has one. 
is to make the margin 22 points. He's been pretty well for goal today. And that is no exception. He's kicked another one. So Dolitich has booted five goals, three of those in this quarter as Carlton moved to 11-10, Adelaide are 8-6. They definitely need to lift the crates around the middle of the ground. Carlton winning the ball out of the centre. Look at that mark again. From John Dorotic falling back. And uh, here's the kick for goal. He's kicked very well this quarter. Three goals straight. Five goals for the match. John Dorotic has five goals. And Carlton leads 76 to 54. Some Blues fans here this afternoon. Concentration down in that right full forward pocket at the end of which they're kicking at the present time. They'll be enjoying this term. Madden wins it down. Marshall intercepts. Dorky has had a wonderful game. Long towards half forward. The Blues have got the numbers back. Hodges slaps it away. Chance for Smith. Hocking was on the overlap. Carlton apply good pressure again. Tregenza picks it straight up in the air. Out comes Bassett. Slaps it away. In front Silvani. Close to the boundary line. In fact, it's out of bounds. The Dick was the man who knocked it towards the boundary. Bassett was there too. He led the chase along with Silvani. So we've got a throw in. Down towards right half forward. That's for the Crows. Negri. McDermott. Did well. Got it to Marshall and turned to Jarman. He's on centre wing. Floats one down towards the 50 metre line. Dean quite content, I'm sure, to see that one go out of bounds. Under three minutes remaining in the third term. Carlton will finish with the advantage of the Blues. What advantage there is. Very good lead. It's been a good turn by the Blues. Silvani lunging at that one. Meldrum gets it out nicely. Rennett's dragged off the kick. Gained about 10 metres. Tregenza across to Marshall. Hoisted high towards centre half court. Good mark is taken by Darren Smith. Well, that's a value of putting it out in front there, uh, centering the ball. Smith, who spent a bit of time on the bench, might be fortunate. I don't know whether he intended to uh, hook it back that far. Uh, Smith in the right position. Well, they need this one, the Crows. The margin stands at 22 points. Smith has got it. Yes, well, Smith uh, hasn't had a great afternoon on the forward line. Begins with a quick hand pass, combining with Marshall, who hooked it back, a centering kick, the value of the centering kick really coming to the fore there. And it's something the Crows do very well. If they have the opportunities, they don't miss too many of those. Darren Smith finishing it off with a good kick for goal. So the Crows hit back, the margin 16 points. Jarman can't take it out of the middle. Neither can Murphy. He goes to ground with Meldrum over the top of him. Jarman burrowing in once more. And McDermott sneaks away with the football, but the whistle had sounded. So we'll have a bounce. Under two minutes remaining in this third term. Carlton coming home with what breeze there is. Gregory <laughs> and Matt Jocelyn. The bounce is not favourable to either. Just wrestled down the throw-ins. The only time they've had a run at the ball is at uh, centre square ball-ups. Michael Murphy goes long in towards Hodges' territory. Hammered defensively over the line. But just on one minute remaining, the Crows could get another one here. It would keep them in touch. Because Carlton kicking with the aid of the Blues. Negri determined to get front position. Murphy, claim. The ball is held, so we'll have another one. Capacity crowd once more. The football park, just under 45,000 for the clash with Hawthorne. And he's going to get that. Nicky had him by the arm. The fans not too happy with it, but uh, Madden got that front position. And Negri dragged him off it. So Justin Madden, the centre wing, looking for Dorotich. 
Warhurst over the top affects the spoil. Alvin could have been pushed in the back. Bassett scoots away with a sweeping hand pass, but it goes straight to Lindsay. Warhurst, tackle too high. It'll be a free kick the way of McDermott. Time's going to be against them. There's the siren. It's three-quarter time here at Football Park, and Carlton leads 11-10. 76 Adelaide 9660 Only 16 points in this game at three-quarter time. Carlton with a six-goal blast in the third term lead 11-10-76. Adelaide Crows 9-6-60. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1991 AFL Premiership season. Well, Jim Richards has said, catch me if you can in the Australian Touring Car Championships. We come to round three now. And that's at Wanneroo on Sunday, April 14. Don't forget, check your local guides for times. In fact, Wanneroo has a busy couple of weeks because they'll also be hosting the Amscar series. And that is the following week, Sunday, April 21st. That's Amaru Park. So I'm getting my Amers mixed up there, Bernie. Does happen. Max Stevens is on the boundary line. What have you got to report, Maxie? 
Well, Sandy, as one would expect, Graham Corns is pretty disappointed at this point of time. He's saying to his players that they're not showing any discipline or the desperation they've shown in the past weeks. He's asked his players and been very critical of the players not attacking the running players of Carlton. And he said, in a nutshell, I want to start seeing you wear those Carlton players like a glove. David Parkin, we didn't really hear much of what he had to say, but he did appear quite pleased. And he's explained to his players there's only 25 minutes to go, plus time on. Let's see if he can carry it out. Thank you, Max. And our statistics for the third quarter, Bernie? Well, not a lot showing from that. 16 marks to Carlton on the uh, forward line. Well, not, on, uh, not only on the forward line, but a lot of those on the forward line to Dorotich, Coonahan. And the marks that really told, taken by those players and resulting in Dorotich kicking three goals for the term. They really had something going in that uh, in that quarter. Six goals won, they kicked very accurately four goal, and uh, Adelaide really with a job in front of them now. Breaking down, they across, can do it. breaking down across half forward Adelaide, aren't they? And I think the planning, as we talked about before, that David Parkin has put into this Carlton side has stood them in good stead for the best part of the afternoon. They've closed down some of the prime movers. Of course, David Parkin coached for five seasons at Carlton, won premierships in his first two at his last stint. And here he is, I think, close to a personal triumph today after the happenings of nine days ago and the problems Hawthorne had. A great chance for Carlton to get the four points here this afternoon. Those two men have been pretty well held, particularly Tony McGuinness. Tommy Alvin's done a wonderful job on him. And we saw in that Friday night game that McGuinness roaming, free running, is a very dangerous commodity for opposing teams. So this big crowd here at Football Park giving their full support to the Crows as this final quarter is about to commence. Carlton lead by 16 points. They're going with the breeze. Can the Crows stem the tide? It'll be Negri and Madden yet again. Won by Madden. Quickly out of the centre they go, down towards the half forward line towards Hannah, who came out to meet the football. Lost it, with him is Maynard. Hannah's quick to recover. Almost throws it out to Bond. Back again. Hannah tucked on the boundary line. I don't think he tried to kick for goal. He's got Dorotich right across the other side. He's pulled off the ball, and he's been pinned. Threw it away, John Dorotich. Just uh, had possession of it, then let it go. So we've got a throw in in front of the big scoreboard here at Football Park. After the rain earlier on in the afternoon, bright sunshine now. Dorotic leaving it, taken away by Bartlett. Back towards centre right. Negri, beautiful mark by Negri. Showing some sort of agility there. His kick in towards the centre, through to the top. Well, they've been breaking down across half forward, as Dennis said. If they can score the first goal in this final term, it'll give them a tremendous lift. Not a good kick by Klug there, Sandy. Bassett, Phillips, back to Bassett. And Klug will see it over the line on the other side. Klug kicked it to a man, Smith it was, who was covered by about three Carlton defenders. Silvani doing a great job, starting off on the ball at the centre bounce and then drifting back into, into defence and helping out the uh, rest of the Carlton defence. Madden gets another free kick. Across to Phillips, towards half forward and Kernahan. Two crows fly, as a result the man on the ground was always yeah. going to be dangerous. Herman got it across towards Kernahan, he couldn't control it. Bond slides in there, across it comes eventually to Lee. The crows unconvincing as they bring it out McDermott was under pressure that time Thompson he's in trouble as well and McGuinness in turn and Carlton give away a free kick but certainly the pressure and the attitude was first weight and now McGuinness if he gets 50 meters that's not so good not too many there that's the only area that Carlton really let themselves down today the silly mistakes McGuinness will be about 60 meters out when he has this kick probably too far to make it the uh, scoring zone. Tony McGuinness. Across the ground. Intelligent kick. Murphy takes the mark. Murphy running into space there. And he'll kick from just on the 50. That's where they've missed out today. Tony McGuinness well held by Tommy Alvin. 
And if he can get into the game in this last quarter, maybe, just maybe, the Crows have a chance. They need an early goal. Murphy starts it right. The Breeze keeps it there. Off hands out of bounds in the right full forward pocket. Carlton lead by 16 points. 22 minutes remaining in the game. Vast crowd at Football Park again. Conditions certainly have improved. Bright and sunny now. Madden back towards the boundary. McGuinness. Close to him, Alvin. That's been the case all day. And McGuinness that time took it across the boundary line. So another throw in. And the battle of the bodies continues. And the umpire lets them play that time. Smith, hurried kick. Floats towards the boundary. McGuinness. Good mark. He's in the right pocket as far as the left foot is concerned. As he comes in, he can open up the angle. He's hard against the boundary. And he's still very tough kicking into the breeze there for Tony McGuinness. 14 Brownlow votes last season, of course, with the Bulldogs. He won the McGarry medal as a 17-year-old back in 82. He runs around, he kicks goalward. That's close. Just missed. It's a good effort from there. I don't think there are many potential goal umpires at either end of this ground <laughs> behind the fence. Never anticipate. Good aim. Good kick back into play. Tregenza ripped off the football. Albert has had a very good day. Rennitz from half back goes towards the centre wing. Kick drops well short over David Marshall. Well, he hasn't been the driving force that he was last week. He gives it to Thompson, who pumps it up towards the half-forward line once more. Ratton over the top. That's that problem sitting over the ball. Even though an attempt is made, the ball doesn't come out, you lose it. Ratton. Back towards the centre. Negri front spot, a palm down towards Thompson. Thompson's kick. Fire from behind. Couldn't take the mark. His immediate opponent, David Kernahan, takes the ball away. And the kick towards the boundary line. He was hoping it may go out. It stayed in. McDermott might have a shot from here. He stabs in towards goal. Silvani is there and he marks clearly on the last line of defence. Has a bounce. Then runs it out to Edgar on the half-back line. Quickly across to Gleeson. They've got it down to the middle and Rennitz. He's in trouble. Gets his kick but under pressure, out in front of Bond to Alvin Tommy Alvin, pressured by McGuinness back to Bond again nowhere to go eventually ball to ground and he sets sail for half four, Dorothy will be his target couldn't take the mark pressure now on the Crows defence, Smart runs it out gets the long hand pass across to Filkey he'll stab to Negri in the middle They're finding it hard to create room now. McGuinness pumps it long in towards the half-board flank area once more. Edgar leaves it. Gleeson on the end of the hand pass. Carlton out of trouble. To Phillips. On to Alvin. Tom Alvin putting Carlton inside 50. Dorotich is there. Kernahan steadies and misses. Three goals. How many behind, Bernie? Uh, four behind, Steve Coonahan. Three, four. A couple of easy ones in that uh, second quarter. Scott Lee kicks in. Half volley taken by Maynard. He sends play back towards the middle. Marshall the flyer. Knocked forward by Madden. Well done by Thompson. In a tight situation to Filkey. Filkey towards half forward. Dean is going back in best position. Gets it on the ground. Half swoops. Pulls it down towards full forward. But it's a wayward kick. It just sneaks in for a behind. Well, that could be the Crows' only chance if they kick it long and direct and not give the Carlton defenders a chance to get back there and cover their opponent. Silvani, who's played as a loose man in defence every time it's gone down there, did not have a chance to get back and cover. Carlton lead by 15 points. This is Simon Verbeek. Goes out wide, coming up the ground. Bond, tumbling mark. Very influential player since half-time. Bond towards centre wing. Knocked on out there by Dean intelligently. It favours Dorotich behind to Ratten inside. Ratten 
Kicks down towards the 50 meter line. Coming back is Maynard. He was held. He marked it in any case, but the free kick was paid. Away to Lee. Not a lot of options down the ground. He comes out towards the big man. Negri has to track it back. He keeps it in front on center wing. Bumped over brilliantly by Verbeek. Across it comes to O'Sullivan. Runners inside, but he elects to kick. He pulls it towards center half forward. Not the best of options. The Crows surround the ball. Up comes Maynard. Confronted there by Phillips. The ball jarred free. It will be a free kick to Maynard. Held without it. Immediately releases it to Lee. Lee from half back. Through centre. Silvani's in front. Off his hands. Meldrum tidies up at the back. To Madden. To Meldrum. They're running very well at the present time, Carlton. The Crows aren't running. Meldrum down towards half forward. Kicks inside the 50. Kernahan. How many times have we seen that? In his fifth season at Carlton, twice best and fairest. And we said earlier, a favourite son of the supporters here in Adelaide, but certainly not today. He's been a thorn in their side up forward. A double-pronged attack. Steve Kernahan and John Dorotich. Kernahan has kicked three. Hasn't been all that accurate. Kicks from the 50 on the breeze. It gives it a ride. It's a goal. That's the spot to kick them from. A much better kick from Steve Kernahan. Four goals, four. And the two Carlton forwards, Kernahan and Dorotic, nine goals between them. And that's been the difference. They've got the ball to the two marking players, two very tall players. A good player by, a good mark by Kernahan. Looking into the sun there, a difficult mark to take. And put smarter on him, tried to uh, settle him down, but still a great player. 21 points the margin here at Football Park, favouring Carlton. Jarman pumps the Crows up towards the half-forward line. They want gold and they want them back. Verbeek does well. Clue got a, an unfortunate bounce. Verbeek's kick up towards the half-back flank. Filthy's got a ton of pace. He's ridden into the ground by Edgar. Over the line and another throw in. Silvani. Only as far as Thompson. He's got a bit of room. Goes long. Hodges comes out and over. Can't complete the mark. Includes court. Almost threw it away. Hodges recovers and shoots the wall. Goal. Will that one the Four goal to Scott Hodges. And it may be just what they want. 10-8 plays 12-11. Another... another a couple of quick ones would be very handy for the Crows. Hodges leaping over the top there. Recovering well, maybe proved a bit lucky because he just let that one go. No serious attempt to get rid of that legally, but uh, Hodges backing up. Kicking his third goal. Blue off. Hocking on. 12-11 to 10-8. Madden and Negri go at it again. Negri wins it down this time. Silvani keeps it in front and missed the ball. Rennett's in trouble. Scrambles it forward. Thompson on his knees. Robbed of it by Edgar. Clever hand pass. O'Sullivan. No time out there. O'Sullivan penalised. Didn't make an attempt. Jarman gets it across to McDermott. Are the Crows lifting? Long kick down towards full forward. He certainly lifted did Hodges but couldn't hang on. Ratton gets it away to Bassett. Bassett swings it out wide. Bond again. Bob's up once more, takes his time, measures the hand pass. It was knocked away from him though by Marshall. Well played. This is Hart. Out of side. Hart kicks inside the attacking 50. Hodges in front. One senses his confidence is rising. But Meldrum comes across the face of the pack to Silvani. Silvani goes in short towards midfield. Lindsay over the top trying to push away. First back is Filky. Running away from his own goal. Hooks it back. It's a wide kick. It bounces out towards the boundary. Eventually, Murphy picks it up. McGuinness has it in front of him now. Coming to meet him, Dean. Battling after the ball, Dean and McGuinness. Sitting on top there, Tommy Alvin. Terrible hand pass there by Murphy. And McGuinness would have had the chance to run into goal if that uh, hand pass had been spot on. Carlton still by 15 points. Bruce Lindsay is hobbling off the ground. Warhurst preparing to come back on. I'm not sure that's what they need at the present time. What they need is pace out there. 
Alvin slaps it away from the congestion. McDermott on his knee. He's got it to Murphy. Good centering kick, Marshall. Kilke goes by. Marshall hangs onto the ball. Rodgers comes on a lead, but he's got another good kick. This will be the fifth, I think. That's right. right. Very handy uh, in front of goal when they're giving those away for the Crows. And this brings Marshall to within 15 metres. They've already kicked two goals from 15 metre penalties. Well, they're very keen to apply pressure, Carlton, and that's been their downfall in one or two of these situations. Working so hard on the mark. They've given away five fifties. And at the end of the day, it's not good enough despite the best of intentions. Marshall gets the goal. The Crows are coming back. The Crows, 11-8. Carlton, 12-11. They still uh, need a couple of quick goals. And the Crows, they've kicked two to Carlton's one in this final term. Still 30 minutes remaining. Only nine points down. And the crowd really getting behind them now. I can sense the fight back, but the Crows have got a big chance. This huge crowd has come to life. Just nine points the difference. Favouring Carlton. Two quick goals to the Crows. Jarman taps forward once again. But it's Silvani who picks it up and kicks high out towards the half-forward flank. O'Sullivan takes a shot at the tackle. Smart is quick to apply. Filkey comes away, but he's kicked to the corner. On the well, very good support there by Filkey, who's played a great game for the Crows today. He's quick, isn't it? 16 games for Collingwood. And he let himself down then. Dorotich in front of the pack. Good kick from Ratton. Dorotich for Hannah. Took it on the half volley. Forgives it, trying to give it off to Jarman. He does so, he wants someone coming past. He's got to get ground to Hart. Daryl Hart kicks under pressure. And over the line. Between centre wing and Carlton's left half forward flank. We saw Lindsay leave the ground. What's his problem, Max? Well, Sandy Bruce, Lindsay, he has a right ankle injury. The extent, I can't tell you. However, doctors have told me he won't be taking any further part in the game. Thank you, Madden. Socket off the ground. Down towards Milhanna once again. Well claimed. Did well to get rid of the football. Jarman does the shepherding work. Smart comes away. Back to Jarman again. Jarman runs through the middle. Up towards half forward. But the kick is marked by Dean. Peter Dean steady in defence. Back to Silvani. His kick. Dropped short. Barber couldn't take it on the half volley. So Sullivan tackled high and he will take it just forward of centre. We've got Dorotich calling for it half forward. He's got Kernahan and Hannah further down. Kernahan's his target. Steve Kernahan has booted four goals, two in the first, one in the second, and one in this term. And as the Crows all went to the ground, Kernahan took it uncontested. Again, the centre line players not getting back to assist to fill up those gaps. Coming up for his 14th kick. So he's been busy. Kicking from 45 metres. Distance should not be a problem for him. It's a good looking kick off the boot too. And that is going to make it very hard for the Crows. Five goals to Steve Kernahan. And Carlton answer the challenge. 13-11 to 11-8. It's very tough now, Sandy. Two great forwards for Carlton. Dorotic and Kernahan. And uh, Steve Kernahan taking a very easy mark in the end. No pressure being applied by the Crows defenders. And accurately off the boot. Five goals, five, Steve Kernahan. Phillips brings it away from the centre for Carlton. So Kernahan has fired. Dorotich has fired. The ball on the Carlton forward line yet again. Bartlett left the ball behind Edgar. Running into an open goal. He's got plenty of pace. He pulls it across his body. And I think he's missed. He has. The margin back to what it was at three-quarter time. Not often in modern-day football you see two forwards bob up kicking five goals on the same side. And I'd venture to say that when they do, their team doesn't lose all that often. But having said that, Carlton have only 13 goals so far. Strange game, dominated by those two forwards, Dorotich and Kernahan. 
They've been the difference without question and the pace of Carlton. Maynard to Marshall. Wide kick again towards centre wing. Dean missed the ball, but he's played a very good game. Ratton got it across to Gleeson, taken high. And it will be a free kick for Carlton back where he kicked the ball. It was untidy by Andrew Jarman coming from behind Adrian Gleeson there. Gleeson on centre wing. Puts it straight to Jarman. This will be interesting. Jarman held without it. No free kick. Dean slapping it on, taken by Smart. It was clever. Smart alongside the centre circle. Thompson, long kick. Hodges is down there with Kernahan. Fisted away by the defender. Taken by Bassett, who's played a grand game. Rennitz has got the run of it now. Clicks it back, looking for support. Off the ground goes Meldrum. It's taken by Phillips. Phillips long towards half forward. McDermott going back. Blocks the mark. Should have held that. Quickly gives it across to Maynard. Bartlett. Towards centre wing. Tregenza. Tregenza, who has pace. Away he goes, a second back, but he's in trouble now. Run down by Bond. He's similarly gifted. For a big drag down in turn by Smith. And we've got a whistle. So the is tackling and smothering this game. We saw that one from Jarman on the mark. And against Gleeson that really turned uh, defence into attack. A crowd of 43,850 enjoying this game. So just under 45 against Hawthorne a very good support base for the Crows. Silvani marking the kick of Marshall. Tucked in defence. Kick went a little too far for Bassett. McDermott has it. Well, they've got to find something very smart there. McDermott's kick in towards full forward. Hodges working hard. Gives it to Jarman around his body. To a 10-point margin, 12-8 to 13-12. Oh, it's never say die by the Crows. A good performance by them. A couple of times it's looked like close the door. But uh, a mistake by Silvani kicking a little bit long, allowed McDermott to take the mark. Oh, a great snap by Jarman. Ten points the margin. Back in the middle once again. Phillips unable to sneak away. Thompson's beautifully claimed. Loses the football. Back with Phillips. He shoots in towards full forward. Hannah waits in front for Kernahan to try and get it down. That's the way it goes. Is that the reply from Mill Hannah? One behind. 11 points the mark. Just over seven and a half minutes remaining. Crows desperately trying to keep their record intact here at Football Park. Warhurst goes to the outer side. They've got possession, they want the next goal. So Genza from halfback sweeps it on to Filkey. He's got McDermott running if he wants him. He uses it now. A little too far. He's solidly met by Gleason. Down he goes. Real desperation. Dean overruns it. Gleason couldn't take it. Jarman in there, tries to feed it out to Hocking. And Eddie blasts his way through, gets the handball away. The hurry kick goes up towards Hart. Got a touch. Couldn't complete it. Melbourne takes from Dean. Steadies to Alvin. Well, that Carlton defence remaining cool. Tommy Alvin. Beautiful looking kick. Dorrit Hitch couldn't mark and having great trouble picking it up Silvani over the top They've got the numbers at the moment Carlton in towards Phillips Silky comes to meet him Kernahan can he sneak away he can't he's still going he's crying the crying ball from this huge crowd goes unheeded Warhurst ducked his head but managed to get the hand pass away and half concedes it behind Two straight kicks in. Just over six minutes remaining. And this is where a crowd can win you a game of football. Very much behind the Crows. Are they good enough though? And that's a correct decision. Marshall tackling Gleeson as they contested that mark. He was intent on spoiling, but 
Good use of the body by Gleeson, made it very difficult. And a poor kick out there from Warhurst. That uh, kick's only travelled 40 metres. Didn't expect more than that. He didn't even go to the defensive side, Dennis. No, that's been an ongoing problem for them this afternoon too. They're kicking in. Hasn't been all that convincing. Looking to get a short one, then set something up. But they've paid the price a few times. Gleeson can't get it home. Off hands Phillips. It's through. Andrew Phillips stretches Carlton's lead. Just over five minutes remaining. That's his first goal. Very timely. In a sense, they lost their chance when they were running down the ground earlier. And Filky's hand pass missed McDermott. It was a vital miss because they had the break. It was good play running out of the back line. Right down to that half forward line. And a very poor hand pass by Filky when they could have set it up for a goal. Negri and Madden. Marshall left it behind. McDermott flew over the top there as he tried to soccer it forward. Bassett. He's done a wonderful job on Tregenza today and picked up many possessions himself. A long kick down towards full forward. Bartlett gets back. He's in the goal square to Lee. Some of the crowd leaving now. Given what we've seen so far from Adelaide, that could be a little premature. They've spent a lot of fight today, but Carlton have done it well. They really have thought about this game, Carlton, and those plans have been put into practice out there on the ground. Still time enough if the Crows can muster something. Winnets towards the pocket. Hanna against the boundary line. Tackled by Maynard. Still they go. Hanna does well. Clicks it across. Phillips now should seal their fate. Phillips from 20 metres out has kicked another one. And that should be it. Andrew Phillips has bobbed up in the last minute to kick two goals. And perhaps seal this game. So Carlton a 15-14. Adelaide at 12-8. Yes, uh, that's it for uh, the Crows. I mean, big strife. I thought this might have been a scoop off the ground by Hannah. We'll see it again. A bit of a scoop. The umpire sometimes does pay that uh, as being a throw, but not on this occasion. So Carlton getting away with that one and uh, away to a big break now on the Crows. A margin out to 24 points. Just over four minutes remaining. McGuinness has been well held to Thompson. Looking for Tregenza. Bassett's with him and he's been with him all day. He's done a fine job. Still pushes it down towards the half forward line and eventually gets a kick in towards the pocket. Dean first to greet it. Across to Ratton. He's steady. He's going to the outer side. And Verbeek takes the mark. So Carlton knew they had a mission when they came here today. And they've done it remarkably well towards Doherty had a very good pre-season and has had a good day today in towards Madden at half forward couldn't take it cleanly Marshall to Filkey going past Grant Filkey to the half forward line wants uh, Eddie Hoffman like lightning he gives it away to Clue who under pressure kicks with his left foot in towards the pocket and it will be taken over the line for three Kick much too wide from Krug. They had a chance there, the Crows, an open forward line. Couldn't drag it back in front of goal. Well, this was a vital game for the Crows because they go on the road now for three weeks. Three tough games culminating with a clash with the West Coast Eagles in Perth and that'll be anything but easy. McDermott snaps blindly in towards the forward zone. It drifts across the face of goal and we'll find ourselves with a throw in in the right forward pocket for the Crows. on two and a half minutes remaining Madden using the left hand Clue gets the hand pass away the kick partly smothered on McGuinness Jarman to McDermott under pressure gets a kick in towards full forward turn a hand and behind the seat. a good performance by Carlton today Sandy some good coaching moves by David Parker especially Silvani on the ball and then dropping back as a loose man in defence. Alvin on McGuinness has cut him completely out of the game. And of course the two big marking forwards, Kunahan and Doritic, with also uh, Mil Hanna able to chip in. Adrian Gleeson at half-back. Kunahan's run down towards the flank. 
And they're quite happy with possession now. Rennitz has it on half-back. Loose players everywhere for Carlton. They know that they've got this game parceled up. Bond, who's been busy since coming onto the ground. His kickover goes to Warhurst. O'Sullivan. He's very quick. Has done some good, strong work. Look, that's how quick he is. He gets through. But he's run too far, I fear, on this occasion. And he's not happy. So Warhurst to take it at half-back. The sting has gone out of the game, and it's certainly gone out of the crowd. Peter Dean to Silvani. Madden not trying to take, just flick it on to Gleeson, the smaller player. Lee couldn't take it cleanly. Phillips tries to soccer off the ground to Hannah. He loses it. Maynard gives it away to Marshall, and Marshall comes away for the Crows going in towards the centre. Klug was the target, knocked away from him. Filkey well by Dean it ricochets towards Ratton who is held without it and the advantage is played no he's pulling it back the umpire Ratton has battled hard on Jarman kicks towards half forward Kernahan knocked away by Warhurst McGuinness Alvin as always in close attendance this is Bartlett towards the outer side another of those pairings out there as Dean comes through Tregenza and Bassett this is Alvin Harkins manned them up very well today. Dorotic, almost the big leap. Lee gave it away. Bond held it a long time. Filkey, a couple of kicks were earned in there. Bradley Filkey, probably Adelaide's best player. Yes, no doubt, Dennis. He's been uh, an extremely good player in defence and attack. He's worked really hard at both ends of the ground. Kicks towards the outer side. Behind the beak. Swings it out wide where it bounces out of bounds. Just about siren time. The Adelaide Crows to experience their first loss in the AFL. And a bit of loss for the home team. But I'm sure some valuable lessons learned here this afternoon. And Carlton, a great start in their season. A young team on the experience side. They've come across and they really picked up the challenge and they've come away convincing winners by 23 points they simply outran the Adelaide Crows 15-14 to 12-9 it's a great start by Carlton and with Craig Bradley to come back into the side once his cricket commitments have concluded David Reese jones also and Carlton will be looking no doubt for a very big year Bernie definitely they seem to have some pace into this side too uh, Sandy something they haven't had for a while the likes of um O'Sullivan, who was very impressive across the centre of the line. Bassett, not a bad player. Some of their on-ball players, Phillips, Bond, they all look very good. And of course, when you combine that with their forwards, on the forward line, the two big forwards, who uh, did very well. Look at the match stats, 213 kicks, handballs pretty much the same. Simon Madden, uh, Justin Madden, of course, winning the Battle of the Wrestlers, 39 to 16, which is uh, a big advantage in that area. 16 to 12 in the centre bounces where Carlton did lose out was a 50 metre penalty area six to one and uh, that's something I have to work on because Adelaide got three goals out of those 50 metre penalties but uh, all in all it was a very impressive performance by the Blues over here in Adelaide coming up against a big crowd they knew what they were up against and uh, they really planned it well a couple of the players going off the ground McGuinness very quiet because he was tagged by uh, Tommy Alvin McDermott tried his heart out, as he always does, but uh, really, they were just outgunned because they didn't have the players on the forward line. Clute's a bit of a worry at centre-half forward, not mobile enough, and uh, really, I think he just lacks that pace that you really need, the mobility in that forward line. And uh, well done by the Blues. They really planned for it. They came over here, keyed up, and a great performance by Carlton. Time now to check the CUB AFL 1991 Premiership Season League Ladder. So the only uh, interest in the ladder is of course today's game and it sees Carlton as you can see sitting in there with the match ratio 100%. They've got uh, the four Premiership points and a percentage of 128.4 with Adelaide slipping down percentage wise the match ratio of 50, their percentage 136.4. Tomorrow, of course, this big Easter round continues. Geelong plays St Kilda, Hawthorne plays Sydney, 
and the Tigers play host to Essendon. So three big games tomorrow. A reminder, wherever you're watching around Australia, however, check your local guides for details. So that wraps it up from Football Park. A big victory for Carlton. The Adelaide Crows now are out on the road. In the middle of a large field, an umpire stands. He's got a ball raised up in the air. He's waiting for a siren to ring. Siren to ring. In the streets of any suburb in any country town in Australia, little children are dreaming the very same thing. It's a national obsession. This is the greatest game in the world. Let's play football. It's a national obsession. At the end of the season, a captain stands with a cup raised in the air. The winner of the greatest game in the world. Game in the world. Put your feet up. Try and relax. It's football time. This has been a Seven Sport production.